Okay, okay, welcome to today's finals at Nim Larvik, North Youth Championships. Here in Norway, it's quite cloudy as of this morning, but it's supposed to clear up. My name is Benjamin, and next to my side I have... Leila. So we're both going to take us through, uh, we're going to try and talk us through this event yeah. and the gold finals for today. Um, we're going to have a look at the first match. Uh, we're still preparing the field a bit, but we're s we heard that we're supposed to be on time. Yeah, hopefully. So today we have gold medal matches for um, Recurve, under 18. We have, sorry, I'm sorry, Compound U16 women, Compound U16 men, Compound U18 women, Compound U18 men, Recurve U16 women, Recurve U16 men, Recurve under 18 women, Recurve under 18 men, Compound under 21 women, Compound under 21 men, Recurve under 21 women, Recurve under 21 men, and also Recurve under 21 world archery women, and Recurve under 21 world archery men. So the world archery classes will shoot on 70 meters, and the uh, um, under 21 men and female will shoot on 60 meters. Yeah. Yes, and for the first match we have, uh, it's a gold final match, uh, compound under, under 16 women. And uh, we can have a quick look at the, the brackets. There were uh, four competitors in, uh, in this group, and as we can see, uh, Thordis uh, won her first match, 143 to 46, which made her move on comfortably. comfortably. And uh, from Denmark, we can see Johan Jiang uh, beat Elsa Orkelen from Sweden, 149 to 139. So that's going to be the match setup for today. We can also see that Elsa Orkelen, she won. That's actually quite interesting to see, because uh, we can see that uh, Ariana, who shot her semifinals, Shot a 46 in her semifinals, but she came back real, real strong yeah, in the bronze, bronze medal match. Yeah. And we see it's also kind of interesting because Johanna only um, qualified as number th the third one, but also in her semifinals she shot a 149, which is one point below perfect. So possibly she's an archer who likes uh, the pressure of finals and will probably give a good, strong fight against uh, the number one ranked. So for the field right now, I can see it's actually already starting to clear up a bit. Uh, it's quite cool to see we have quite a bit of a crowd. Um, some flags are there. You can see the Danish flag. So there's guy. Let's hope there. Is, let's hope that there's going to be some nice cheering. Yeah, we'll hope the audience is well with us today. During the weekend here in Nome, we have had 142, 52 participants in. 23 classes and we've had sun, we've had rain, we have wind, we have had a bit of everything besides snow, <laughs> thank oh well, God. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> we could, well, we, we would have been full circle if we'd had snow. Yeah, but it's summer in Norway, so it usually doesn't happen, at least not down here. So there we see the crowd at least. Just some starting problems with everything. But we should be on cue at any moment, hopefully. So the setup here is um, we're trying something new with individual matches and um, altern alternating shooting, uh, which isn't something that the archers are very used to. But it's a good practice and it's very fun for the archers to do and to practice on shooting international events and stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> having finals like this is actually a quite important experience. It's a very important experience <laughs> because this is what you do in a World Cup final. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one of the main goals of the youth championship like this is to give ki the youth an experience of how it would be if they were to go internationally at yeah. some point uh, without there being the immense pressure. But it's quite interesting because you've also been walking up and down the line during the competitions and it's 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 quite awe-inspiring I would say to see how 
how affected almost all of the athletes are, even though they're, we, they know that this competition is, is, is more or less just a friendly yeah. rebound between the Nordic, Nordic countries, that one of the main goals is that, yes, you're going to get the international experience, but at the same time, it's also about the social, yeah. about meeting other youths from the area. They all live in the same school and they sleep together and they do events in the evenings and stuff like that. So it's very about bonding friends across the nations and stuff like that. But it's also very competitive. I won my first uh, youth champion, Nordic Youth Championships in 2013 and that uh, skyrocketed my whole international com career and my motivation to become an international archer and compete on the international level. Which actually shows how important NUM yeah, is. Yeah, it yeah, actually yeah. shows how important it is. It looks like we're ready to start the final now. Yeah, we have the athletes, so... Uh, on the field. Denmark, yeah, oh. Yes. Denmark on the left. Uh, on the right, I mean. With Jan Tiang. And uh, third is on the left from Iceland. The main judge is uh, Bjorn Omholt, I think. And the range is clear for our first set of the day. Compound under 16 women's gold final match. Which the archers, good luck. Yeah, that the first arrows fly today. And it's quite nice because right now the sun is starting to peak out as well. Yeah, so it's getting a little warmer. It's been it's been cold in the air today, so it's important to stay warm. We see the archers have sweaters under their, their um, t-shirts. Yeah. Okay, so we have our first end coming. Third is is uh, gonna take it away. We saw her during uh, during practice yesterday. She had a nice, comfortable, calm draw, yeah. and she oh. continues where she left off yesterday, That's which is quite impressive. That's a good ten. Nice to get it out of your system and just start feeling good. And a nine for Johanna. Oh, that's a wide eight. Oh, that's some that that that, that drew out probably something. Yeah, uh, that was quite awkward. You we see, it's we, very, we very did windy. not see her shooting like that yesterday. That no. was quite, quite interesting. I don't think I can remember a shot to the left. Ooh, oh, Johanna nine. is. She is doing it comfortably. She's having a good uh, a good group, but you can see behind the archers and everything that the wind is picking up a bit. So it's probably the reason why. Ah, That's but she's back ten. in the yeah. ten. So it's that like feels good after a shot like that. Yeah. So it's a quite comfortable twenty-eight. There for third is uh, Johan Johanna has uh, an asterisk to her nine. If she shoots a 10 here, it's all even. Possibly, unless that Oh, and she up. does. And she does. That's quite cool. So it looks like we'll have be having an even match today. That's the first one to go out. I would, uh, based on what we see here, I would call the arrow out. So it's yeah, definitely 28. Yeah, it looks like a 9. So, and again, this is compound match, so this is not set-based. They're shooting a total of how many yeah. arrows? 15 arrows, 150 points. Uh, and the one who has the highest points by the end of five rounds wins the match. So it's never over until the last arrow is shot and in the target. So that's quite... Uh, it which actually makes that recover compound still has some differences, which actually makes it a bit more appealing to, to look at. Yeah. So it, all the entire match setup doesn't come become too equal. Yeah. And in compound, there's no room for mistake. Every arrow counts. In recurve, you can have that one, like, a bad, nuts, yeah, a bad arrow, and it, you, you might still win the match. But in compound, with a level like this, you need to be on all the time. So, and we see that the arrow was marked down, not surprisingly. And we're getting uh, ready for uh, N2. So the scores are confirmed, 28-28. And uh, we're getting ready for the next end. The coaches are, I mean, the judges are clearing the field. The agents got the arrows. And we're almost ready for our next end. Yeah. And now since it's even, uh, Tutis will continue to shoot first because the score is even. I can see that there is some slight wind on the field. Would you think that this has that's not much, but if there's some wind at least, how would you usually approach this? <laughs> I would usually try to just keep my shots at nice and rhythm and rhythm is nice and important, but uh, you will, the wind will push the ball out, which usually ha makes you tense up a bit. Um, so it's important to just stick with the flow and stick with, have trust in your technique. It's always important. Oh, that's a nice 10 for both of those girls. 
And also with alternating shooting, you have only 20 seconds to shoot at one arrow. And at the same time, you have a lot of pressure to shoot your arrow correctly, but at the same time, your opponent, as soon as your opponent is done shooting, the ti your time starts. So you, you might not have that time to reset as you usually do. That's a low nice. She didn't look very happy with that shot. But it's still good. I can actually detect that there's a nice uh, breathing rhythm in a third yeah. hands. And, and you could you go, yeah, you get she you could almost see before the shot yeah. was executed that no, there was something that was amiss. If she shoots a ten here, we're still equal. And she does not does not. No, it's Sorry, an that's all <laughs> 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 So Tordis is leading by one. Yeah. And the judges come out to do the scoring, but as we see, there aren't any arrows near the line, so this is uh, we're quite comfortable at saying that this yeah. is 29 28. So, as the score is for now, as you pointed out, it's 57 56. Of course, we're going to make sure until the judges have confirmed. So, the sun is starting to peak out a bit, and that can uh, also. Um, as an archer on the line, depending on where the sun comes from, especially in compound archery, it can affect your aim a little. Uh, so we might now see the sights, uh, the grouping for the girls maybe adjust a bit because the okay. sun is coming through the scope and the peep and it will ca cause some sh shades and stuff like that. Yeah, it good. might be uncomfortable to suddenly get the sun in your face. So it's a another thing the archers need to be able to change up and be prepared for mentally. It's actually quite interesting because, as, as, as you said right now, we're talking a bit about the sun and the lighting. And right now, as it's still early in the morning, they're actually shooting into the sun, which is yeah. not a comfortable experience no. as an archer. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not the most ideal thing. Um, but, I mean, it works. You're shooting your arrows. You probably practice this a bit. But if you have... Um, if you're an archer shooting on a specific field and you never train on any other fields, you will possibly have that problem during competition that the sun will move and um, maybe you haven't practiced that, shooting with the sun in your face. And so now Johanna is uh, taking it away with the first shot of this set. That's and a nice 10. That's a 10. Hitting the line is hitting the line. Yeah, it still counts yeah, as in. It's in. Time. Oh, she's holding a long turn there. She looked not, did not look happy with all her weight. Oh yeah, she dropped quite a bit. Yeah. And now the um, the leader has changed. Which Just actually like shows how, how quickly it can yeah. change, especially. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're shooting on a quite, you can see the level between these two. Yeah. Is quite, uh, they're quite evenly matched. It wasn't that big of a difference in their uh, qualifying either. No, there was, it was just a couple of points. Yeah. <gasps> I really do have to point out though, I really do like that Thordis has a, it looks like she has a quite oh consistent, that's, a nice ooh, that's strong. It's impossible to beat, but uh, for her sake I hope she shoots a 10 to just get a good feeling after this end. And she and does. And she does. And so. now from the previous end, this the leader has switched with one point. So Johanna was uh, trailing last end and now Thordis is training, trailing. Which just shows how interesting this uh, match is, and especially with uh, with uh, accumulating scoring and stuff like that, you can change very very fast. It's never over until the last arrow is in the target. And for this end as well, there aren't any any asterisks, no liners. Well, there was the one arrow, but it clearly crossed the line, so yeah. there was no doubt about it. Yeah, we can see it here. It's fair. It's very. It's good 30. That's a nice feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling. And we're off in our fourth end. And now Thordis will start shooting because she is trailing. Behind with one point. I noticed that she has a really... Uh, you can really clearly see that she inhales during her raise and that uh, there's a clear exhale during her draw and anchoring. Yeah. 
which is uh, something that I really like to see in archers that they have like a oh that's that's a nice that's shot a that is a strong strong shot you can see there's a lot of wind on the field oh and she answers that's a nice nice return You can actually see she's being affected by the yeah. wind a bit. You can see the bow yeah. shaking a bit. And that's the hard part because your balance will be affected. She's holding up for a long time now. Oh, but she still manages a comfortable 10. That off. is it very, very off. impressive. And we have to remember that they only have 20 seconds during for each yeah. arrow. <laughs> and she answers, Johanna is saying you ain't got nothing for free from me today. <laughs> So Thordis ha had the lead, but is now trailing. But Johanna, uh, Johanna is, oh, she's leaving the door open to, for uh, Johanna to increase the lead by one point. Let's she see if she can take it. That shot. Oh, oh, that is a liner. No, that is difficult to see, but the I... The judge will probably have another look at that. Yeah, that's definitely going to be, we can just, uh, we'll see what the judges, uh, what the judges say here. It's a very high, um, high on these girls. L the level on these girls is very high. So we see the nine marked as an asterisk. See the judge are, are looking at the arrow right now, calling it either a ten or a nine. One one six. So the agents are marking, so um, there has been a score on that one, so we should get it up any time soon. Yeah, the judges, uh, we can see actually the judges are... And it's marked up as a 10! It's marked up as a 10, so her, her, her lead increases by one more point. Yeah, before the final end. That's so the second third is your shot in a row, isn't it, Johanna? I can't think so. Yes. Yeah. In the previous end, she shot a 30 as well. So now we're going into uh, the fifth end. Fifth and final end. And Thordis is trailing, and uh, she has to. P she has now the opportunity to put some pressure on Johanna. Johanna will have that final arrow, knowing which uh, points she needs to hit to win the match, and that is a lot, a lot of pressure. She looks calm and collected. Oh, a nine. We can actually see that the wind is uh, is really affecting affecting. We can see them uh, on the stabilizers and on the bow. I would actually almost say that Johanna looks a bit calm. Oh, that's, oh, that's strong. strong. And I was about to say she looked a bit more calm during the shot, less affected by the wind. Yeah. You can see Thordis is uh, is is, a b is shaking a bit or not shaking but moving a bit more, which makes the shots so difficult. But that, that is, is that, that is a ten. That is a ten. It's a good feeling. And you know it's like a mental game because you're moving you're quite a lot. Ooh, oh, okay. She still gets it. <laughs> she still gets it. <laughs> uh, I get the impression that she felt a bit lucky with that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do that. Oh, the that other another hour that drew out just to the nine. So uh, that's the most for sh I would say surely a twenty-eight. So a seven, so seven to, to win, win the match. And, and, a and, nine. and a nine. Yeah. So no matter no matter what, that arrow is going to be marked up bad. She is uh, Johanna is going to be the winner of this match. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations to Johanna as Nordic Youth Championship for Compound Under 60. Hey, hey, you're, you're changing your. And that's a nice experience for the girls to have in the box and just knowing that they they've shot this field with a, the big crowd cheering them on and. Having the pressure of shooting, alternative shooting, and only having 20 yeah. seconds will really mess with your rhythm and everything. So it's a nice, it's a nice experience. It's nice, nice little something to put on your resume. Oh yeah, 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 yeah Hang yeah. it on the wall. Yeah. And just remember, <laughs> remember the nice experience. And we can have a look at the ranking from from the qualification yeah. again. And we can actually see here that Thordis had a, had a quite comfortable lead with almost 15 points here to uh, to Johanna. Yeah. 686 to 6671. But it just shows you anything can happen in finals. There's 15 arrows. Nothing that happens in qualification is really detrimental to what happens after during the finals. And some archers just really, really like that pressure of having to shoot 
three arrows and keeping the focus on all the time and just know that if I mess up this one arrow, I'm losing this match. And we have a confirmation from, uh, the, judge. from the judge that Johanna is the victor of this match. We can see the archers uh, thanking each other and, actually, and giving each other a nice, hu nice hug, thanking for the match, which was a great... Uh, it was a great match to watch. It was, it was, a, it was a very, very yeah. entertaining to watch because it was a bit back and forth. So now we're getting ready for our uh, next match, which is going to be a compound. Under 16 men. Under 16 men. So, uh, here we're gonna have a matchup of uh, Emil from Finland against Holvar from uh, Norway. Yeah, it was quite a big gap between these two during qualifications. Uh, Emil shot 669 and uh, Holvar shot 618. But then again, it's 15 arrows. The winner takes it all. <laughs> the winner takes the it winner all. The winner takes it all. It doesn't <laughs> matter what you shot during the, your... Um, that was team? That was the team. That uh, was the it doesn't matter what you shot during the qualification as long as you can keep your focus on those 15 arrows. There we go. So now we have the proper rankings yeah. here. And we can actually see that they were both uh, number one and number two yeah. in qualifications. But here we can, have, we can actually see there is a bigger gap between... Uh, between these competitors. But that doesn't mean that this match, ne this match needs to be boring at all. No that's, no, that's for sure, that's for sure. Let's have a look at the brackets while they get ready for the next match to come out on the field. So uh, we can see here that both Hovar and Emil, they, were, they shot against Walter Wilson as we like yeah, to call him. <laughs> so they had a walkover in their first, in their first match. But well, uh, this is actually where it gets a bit more interesting because now we can see what they were actually shooting in uh, in the final matches, and we can see that Emil shot 142 in his semifinals against Carl, who sh Carl Rundberg, who shot 124, and Hover shot a 131, which is a 11 point discrepancy here. But yeah. as you say, anything can happen. Anything can happen, and this is. Like alternating shooting, many of these archers have not done it before. There's a crowd like right in your face, there's cameras, there's microphones, there's a lot of stuff happening. So you can really get to your nerves. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time I shot with a camera in my face and I was like, there's a camera there. I'm staring directly yeah. at a cameraman right now in my face. That's when, uh, when was that? Do you remember when that was? Uh, I think it was our national championships actually uh, in the or uh, it was in Denmark uh, and then you know I've shot a few World Cups they're, they're walking around with cameras there and stuff like that uh, and I remember watching um, uh, uh, there's a uh, shooting I, I don't remember what it's called uh, the shooting the shooting uh, I think oh uh, the, uh, the uh, they're shooting with guns for uh, Play pigeons and stuff like that yeah. for a week, yeah, in Norway, and then they're lying on the the ground with cameras directly moving into their face, and I was just <laughs> remembering, like <laughs> visualizing for myself that can happen to me. It won't. Yeah, yeah. It never works like that in archery. But I remember I was sitting on the couch watching this, and I was like, okay, I need to prepare for the camera one centimeter across from my face. So we now have the archers have come to the field. Uh, Emil on the left for Finland and Hover on the right uh, from Norway. Christian Abla is uh, the judge of the match, or the line judge of the match. Yeah. And uh, the range is. Should be clear. So he's uh, signing who's going to be the first and the second shooter. Making sure they're ready, checks the field. Also, the, it's the first time the judges are doing stuff like this, so they're nervous as well. It was a, it was a, it was quite interesting to see when they had the first walkthrough yesterday. Yeah, we could really see that some of the judges were almost almost shaking a bit. Yeah, they're not used to being on a camera either. So Emil is going to take away, as we saw, the first shot, and he starts with yeah, the ten, puts the pressure on Holbar. Just get it there. It's a nice feeling because you know your sight is correct, your aim is correct, everything is just working perfectly, and you're getting that. Payment. Oh, there's a five or six. 
Yeah, that's almost a liner. Yeah. Yeah. There is something must have happened because we saw him shoot yesterday oh, as well. Oh, oh, oh. And we have oh, we have to remember here twenty yeah. seconds. Yeah. And this is uh, this is sort of the problem with with alternating shooting because now you have lost some time, and it can get to you. But it didn't look like it got to a mule. It's a good nine. Sid Hover can collect himself from uh, the previous uh, the previous end, and oh, he that's does. A good nine. That's a nice nine. So good getting it back. back into the center. Yeah. The target. Let's hope he can shake it off. So this is actually where you could say that. Oh, oh that, that is, is a stroke. But yeah, I would also say that's it's probably going to be marked. Liner. It's yeah. going to be marked up as a, as a liner. But now the gap is quite uh, quite big. It seems like uh, it's quite a big ticket discrepancy here. Yeah, that's a six. But there's nerves. There's it. it's something new. There's an audience. Like usually in competitions like this, nobody is watching you shoot your gold medal match because everybody else is shooting theirs. So to have it in a, an event like this and shooting like this, it's very very uncommon for the archers and a very very good experience. I actually do think I remember my first time. I think it was in the the World Archery Championship in Copenhagen. Yep. We shot mixed team against Denmark. Uh, with all of World Lottery's live streams. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. that's a big apparatus. When yeah, that is going yeah. live, that's a lot going on. So we had a separate match uh, on a separate field from everybody else while everybody else was shooting and there was a crowd behind us and there was cheering and it was an experience, yeah, for sure. And I'm sure it got to me in the nerves and everything. <laughs> and you know, there's people watching, there's people watching at home, you know it's going to be live streamed, it's on YouTube forever, like everybody can watch it. It's a it's a very different experience from what you used to. You can see that uh, the one, uh, one arrow from Hobart was marked up as a six. It was not a five, and that Emil got a ten, ten or ten nine ten or yeah. ten, ten, ten ten nine. So which is a uh, quite comfortable sitting on a quite comfortable lead now. Yeah. Twenty nine twenty one. Uh, but anything can happen. So the judges have cleared the field, and uh, we are ready to commence shooting. Hover is gonna start as he's trailing. Judge marks up, and the field is ready for shooting. And sometimes that is just the the extra boost you need to be able to shoot your arrows, and then just not having to worry about what the other guy shoots. Just shoot your arrow, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, what did you do uh, while you were shooting to stay in the bubble? Uh, I don't know. I think I was so nervous that I just <laughs> stayed in my bubble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, but honestly, I was so focused during my matches that I don't really remember what happened. <laughs> okay. Because I was so nervous and I was just shooting my shots and that was all. And I, But I, I made sure that I was ready as soon as my shot had gone through because Sometimes I like to use a bit of time to go through my shot, uh, even before or after my shot when I'm shooting on the line. And sometimes you don't have time for that if your opponent is a very, very fast shooter. Mm. But I was also a very fast shooter, so I wasn't that rushed about the time. Which is actually quite interesting because they're both, I noticed that both of them are shooting quite a bit yeah. faster at this end than the previous one. And Hover started off, has started off uh, a lot stronger this end. Ooh. So we have a 988 for a Hovar, which gives him a 25, and Emil is... Uh, he hold a little bit longer. Uh, both of them... Puts it in the seven. That's a seven. That is most definitely... I would say it's difficult to say from here, but I think that's going to be... going to be a 9997. Nine, yeah. Which put the, puts them at dead even for this end, yeah. which means that the gap did not increase, nor... Uh, <laughs> nor, 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 nor shrink. Down. No. No, but that can really mess with your rhythm and everything you do like in between the arrows when you prepare, if you're going through your previous arrow, if you're mental visualizing your next arrow. If your opponent is shooting very fast, it can mess with your rhythm. Because usually you have 120 seconds and you can distribute that time as you want. You can shoot every arrow at the last 60 seconds if you want. Just stand on the line for a minute and just calm yourself down. You don't have that opportunity here. If your opponent has shot his arrow, you need to start shooting yours. Yeah, you can't yeah. wait. You can't take that time. You don't have that luxury. I actually have seen a couple of archers that <laughs> that enjoy going on the line when there are those finals and they just wait. Yeah. And it really puts off, I've seen it, it really puts off the competitor when yeah. they just stand there and they do not shoot their arrows. Yeah, and some some people need to have that rush of time to get their shot executed fastly and not 
overthink or hesitate, you just know, okay, I need to shoot three sh super fast shots or I'm losing one arrow. Mm. So then they just have to push through their shots and for some people it's working. It really works, yeah. So the scores have uh, been confirmed. The agents are taking out the arrows. And it's 25, 25. Yeah, 25, 25 for this end. We can also see that the practice, we can see the practice field from here and we can see that there are several archers that are getting ready for their matches. And we are ready underway for our next end. The range is clear and uh, since Hobart is trailing he's continuing to start shooting. And it's also uh, here in Larvik we have two fields, so I don't think these archers have been on the top field and it's blowing a bit more, it's more windy up here than it is down there where they've been shooting all weekend. That's actually a very good point and Hobart nine. starts off with a strong nine, he needs that for his confidence. Puts a bit of pressure on Emil, but see how let's see how he handles it. He's answering Answer with a ten. Yeah. That's really, really that strong. That's a ten on the X. It's a good feeling, and you can see the wind is picking up quite a bit. Nine. Oh, and Howard is answering with the nine. He's getting uh, more centered, which is really nice to see. Yeah. I hope I hope he takes that away from this match that he's yeah. really getting back into it. It's a good it experience. It's it's a, a good. Oh, that's strong. That's, yeah. that's really really strong. Every shot that you can f just know what you did right or know what you did wrong is a good learning experience. Mm. And this time he pulls up a high eight, which gives him uh, a set of twenty six. Oh, that's, that's a, a very strong. Curry. That's a perfect score. Yeah. Are those triple X's? Yeah. It almost looks like triple yeah, X's. Triple X's. That's a good feeling to get away with. So most likely yeah. this is gonna be. Uh, there aren't any asterisks here. Asterisks here. No. So. Um, I think that's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. So now we have two more ends to go, and uh, Hover has been shooting 21, 25, 26. Been quite stable, but. For this last end, it seemed like he was collecting himself a bit yeah. more and a lot better than, than for the first end. It seemed like it. <laughs> yeah. And Emil has had a quite comfortable... Uh, Trail. We can see that his previous end something uh, something happened because it's it's it's, it's showing at that 29, tw 29, 25, 30, but he it's got like back on track for this end, and with that, that's a quite comfortable third. Yeah, it must and must feel and great. And that's such a good feeling knowing that you had like one bad end or one bad arrow, and then knowing that you can pull yourself together. And he's done it very very fast as well, pulling yourself together, getting back in into your groove and into your rhythm, and just trusting your co technique again. It's so important. And the archers are going on the line, and Hover is gonna commence the shooting. There is a discrepancy here of 12 points, so he has a quite the bit, quite the job to do to uh, yeah. to get into the lead. Let's see how he starts. He's been shooting the first arrow quite quickly for the at least two, three previous ends, and he continues doing that. It drops, drops low to the seven. Emil with a nine. nine. With a nine. Yeah. I think that's a nine. Yeah. That Looks like a nine eight liner. Yeah. It, all it needs to do is just nick that black line and it's in. Just slightly touch it. Yeah. And, and you can see his grouping is changing a bit, so maybe it's the wind that's affecting it. Hover with a nine. Another nine liner. Going still to be exciting. Yeah, still a bit low, but. And Emil, uh, the grouping is still very yeah. good, though. It's yeah, it's a very it's strong a group, grouping yeah. from from Emil. You can see here, got got he got himself into the ten ring now, 
which seems like he's been uh, he's been adjusting him himself quite 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 well. Yeah, 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 it's really good. Just just a mental game of that, yeah. of knowing Nine. that. Okay, the wind is picking up. What do I do? Do I move my side? Do I aim a bit off? Do I change my technique? Do I have any knowledge of what I can do to make sure that that goes into where it needs to go? And being able to think that on the spot. Of course, during finals like this, we can see that they have um, coaches. No, they don't have any coaches. It would, uh, Hover has a coach Hover behind him. Hover has a coach behind him, but the finish... Yeah, no, there's a coach behind the judge right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just hiding from the he's camera. He's just hiding from he's the He's hiding camera. from the camera, but he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so now is a good time. Like, so, some, some archers need their coach to co talk them down. I usually prefer that, to have someone get me out of my head. Um, and others just like to talk to themselves and reassure themselves and just get back there on their own. So what, what specifically do you remember? What specifically specifically did the coach do to help you stay in the zone? Just uh, talk to me, get me out of my head. Like, let me think about something else when I'm not on the line. Just uh, have fun with it. Maybe if I was trailing by a lot, just remind, my, remind me that this isn't the end of my career. Like, this is a match. This isn't... This is a training experience. This is I'm here for training. It, this is not a World Cup final. Yeah, yeah. That's that, but that, uh, that is actually quite important and yeah. good to remember because we tend to forget that yeah. when we're on the line and we're shooting, and we think, oh my God, this is a, this is the, this is end all be all. Yeah, it's it's a good experience. I always tell my archers like, even if uh, <laughs> even if uh, even if you're trailing, just okay. Put the pressure away, you're shooting good shots. If you have had a lot of good shots today, you can be pleased. Even if the results wasn't what you wanted, even if it wasn't a win. You have to work up to get that win. You need the experience. And we are ready for our fifth and final end, and Hover is gonna open up again. And you can see the wind is really, really going in the back flag there. And we can almost, almost quite comfortably say that I think yeah, unless something uh, miraculous happens, I think. Oh, oh well my! That's oh, it's never you, over. You know what? I'm over. gonna yes, stay silent. I'm words. not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> say anything. This is not over until it's over. It's never <laughs> over until it's over. <laughs> Let's see what Emil does. Okay, it's a nine. That's yeah. a nine. So uh, he's t he's closed the gap by one point. You you need to keep that hope and you need to keep that focus. And okay, I would probably like make it more training based uh, if this was my archer. But at the same time, you need to keep fighting because you never know. Maybe your opponent needs to take down, maybe the time runs out for them. You never, never know. You cannot give up. I've lost too many matches on giving up too soon. Oh, that's, uh, that's a bad feeling. It's a bad feeling. <laughs> Nothing's over till it's over. Oh, and what, what a, a final answer. end a from Hover fight. there. That is so great yeah. to see. And must must uh, at least uh, feel good uh, to end on a good note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So by this, uh, we can quite comfortably say, regardless of how the arrows are being marked yeah. up or down, that Emil is gonna win this gold medal match. And of course, we congratulate him on getting the gold that Emil with the gold medal. And it's such a good experience and such a good learning opportunity and such a. Just a you need to t look at it as training. Your shooting arrows is never wasted, even if you go home, if you even if you don't win a match. And it's Hover is still going home with silver. Like, it's not bad. No, it's definitely it's not, not bad. bad. That's some silverware right there. Yeah. <laughs> and some very very important uh, exercise. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Knowledge to have for later. So, and the scores have been confirmed, so a triple nine for Emil and 10-8-10 for Horvard, which is actually the strongest end he had. Yeah, a 28. This entire, this entire match. But it just goes to show that he has it in him. Yeah, yeah, he just needs more experience and this is a very, very good opportunity. He will learn a lot from this. Uh, if he's anything like me, he'll go home and watch this stream for 10 to 15 times, <laughs> overviewing his technique and everything. It's a great experience. Yeah. We see a handshake there from both the athletes and the judges, and even the, d I mean the coaches, and even the judge gets a handshake, which is a 
great experience for them. We have to for, uh, we can't forget that they're doing an important job as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Trying to make sure that it's a fair, fair and fun experience. Fair for and fun experience. Yeah. For all of the contestants. And here we see the crowd. So these are right beside the archers. So you see them, you hear them. They're breathing down your neck, basically. We can see here that there's going to be the the field is being uh, changed up a bit because we're now going to increase the distance as we have a new match setup coming up. We're now heading into the compound under 18 women's gold match. Yeah. And this is quite actually quite interesting and I need to say I'm going to be probably a bit biased because Tyrrell is my um, I've trained her a lot uh, for a while yeah. um, she's in my club uh, so yeah she is uh, this is going to be an interesting match to watch for sure that is the score is from the previous match hold on there you go this should be correct so now we can have a quick look at the qualification rounds and we have now uh, Tyrrell shooting against Caroline, so it's actually it's it's number one and number two meeting yeah. up in uh, in the matchup. Tyrrell was um, Tyrrell usually shoots on 50 meters, so she didn't know that she was shooting 40 meters here, because the Nordic Youth Championships have uh, some specific uh, rules for regarding distances. So she's usually shooting 50 meters, but she has to move down 10 meters for this competition. So we're getting on our way. The field is cleared and, and we're, we're ready, to ready go. for that the was match. Fast. That's a nice and quick start. And uh, Carolina is going to take it away by shooting first arrow, having some small hiccups with the uh, release there, but went well. It's probably the nerves. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. Oh, look oh, at that bow shaking in the wind. Look at that bow shaking. And the wind is picking up quite a bit. Yeah. And you oh, need she's to shaking. Let's see what, where this goes. Oh. She had yeah, four she seconds on the yeah. clock, so that was really tight. Yeah. That was she really, really tight. Still shot a 10, though. Let's see. It's even Tyrell is having some, can feel it a bit now. Yeah. She gets in, finds herself a comfortable position, and let's see where she puts it. Nine. Oh, a nine. But I would say I'd still like, I liked her shot a bit better as it was a bit smoother, but yeah. she used less time. And we can definitely see that Carolina is being affected by the wind here. She's, She's using a very a long time to put her finger on the she, trigger. Yeah, she has a long, long yeah. hold. And she drops An it into the 8. And that will usually um, give you a problem in winds like this, because you'll already be you'll be everywhere. Sometimes it's just about getting the shot done, and Tyrrell does that. Oh, what a nice shot! Oh, that's, oh, a, good that's a nice shot. It's comfortable, comfortable shot. Yeah. And it just goes to show that, especially when there's wind like this, you have to just keep the pressure up you have to just keep your timing and don't wait just trust your yeah I, I, I get the I get really the impression that Atul is really trusting her yeah. her uh, her shot sequence oh that was surprising oh uh, so she draws it pulls it out to the seven but I so was we're equal now. we're equal but I would say it's, it was a very strong end from yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. from Teal there she, she hasn't shot very long and she takes things very very quickly so she's never been on a um, uh, on a field like this uh, shooting a competition like this so it's very uh, it's a good experience for her for, for the both of the girls for both of them so we have a 26 26 there aren't uh, any arrows here that uh, need to be marked up or down the judges are uh, 
with the agents right now and just making sure that they all agree on the score. But yeah. again, they're marking up now and pulling out the arrows, which is a uh, we can see this is a great experience for both the agents as this is that's not something you get to do very often to be an agent no. to go to the target during no. the finals and it's I, I think it's. Uh, it must be nerve wrecking in its own way because you have yeah. to follow protocol, you have to do it properly. But you're representing uh, the archer from your country and you want to do it properly. You want to yeah. make sure that everything is done correctly. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice and very good fail safe. You want to f fight for your, uh, for your archer and your friend as well if there's an arrow that might, have, might be out or might be in. For you or the components, you, you really need that person that you trust to, to f fight that fight for you. Because you cannot be there yourself. So we're heading into the second end. And the Karina is going to start off again as it you was You can see the sun draw. is coming down now. That just goes to show how interesting the weather is. Because yeah. just literally a second ago it was uh, the wind was crazy. And now there is straight sun. Which is it's actually quite hard uh, conditions to shoot in. Yeah. She seems, uh, but I can already tell, she looks a bit more collected. Uh, yeah, as yeah, the yeah. wind cools down, wind which just makes her quite bit. comfortable nine. She was choosing to stay a little longer, which you don't normally have time, but she has a very fast shot sequence. So she a has strong that. 10. And that it pays off. That is a strong 10. I'm a proud mother right now. <laughs> 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 it's almost like you're a bit biased at this match. Yeah, <laughs> I, I said before yeah, yeah. we started, I'm going to be biased. Not because I want her to win, but I want her to ha go away with knowing that she shot good shots and having a good feeling like, I did this. And I'm happy about what I did. Yeah, and she's she's doing quite quite well. And yeah. you said she's quite new. When did she start? Uh, I think it was one or two years ago. So so and it's not. Now she's shooting a gold finals yeah. in the Nordic Youth. That's quite she's won, like, very very uh, impressive. I think both indoor championships as well. Yeah, that is very very cool. That's very very impressive. And another 10 9 liner. I think yeah. it's a 9. Yeah, I also think so. We have a 10 9 8. Uh, that's actually quite fun because uh, in our club where I'm from, we tend to say that the 10 9 8, that is a Norwegian score. <laughs> when we shoot, that's <laughs> a, a Norwegian yeah, score? That's a classical Norwegian end 10 9 8. Oh. <laughs> Don't know about that. Let's see uh, well how these arrows are marked. Still lacking some numbers from. Uh so this is Carolina's target, and they're saying that it's an eight. Uh, that star. Is a that's a nine. That's I think. most definitely a nine. Yes. And then the judge are looking at two rules targets. Let's say that's a nine. And it's being marked up. So they could both be ten nine nine, or a ten nine eight. So that's interesting because Carolina is being an 8 asterisk and Tyrells is being a 9 asterisk. Or is that the last note? It was probably the 10, yeah. yeah. So let's see, uh, the scores should be updated now as the judges are heading to our technical officer on the field to make sure that we get the graphics in order. And the scoring is confirmed as 45-44, which means that... Something's not right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're having some technical difficulties, so we can let them figure that out yeah. while we go on to the next end. It's probably a 54-54, I think. Yeah. So Carolina is taking it away. And... Uh, there we go, 54-53. That's a nine. You can sometimes see. Uh, I feel like Carolina looks a bit more nervous than Tyrell. She Tyrell looks very steady in her shot and in her position. And sometimes you're fighting a lot with the wind. Yeah. And that's a seven right there. I, I would also. I would almost say she has. Let's put it like this. She has everything to lose as she yeah, had yeah, quite yeah, the comfortable she does. lead. Yeah. And that puts pressure on the uh, on the archer as well. Yeah. Tyrell is definitely the underdog here. Yeah. I love a good underdog. Everybody <laughs> loves a good underdog. <laughs> Sorry, though. <laughs> oh, that's an another. That's an end that really drew out. Yeah. 
It is going the opposite direction of the wind as well. So, so she's it's probably just the nerves. Nerves, and yeah, you can still see she yeah. collapsed so quite a bit. A that's uh, that's yeah. uh, that's a shame. So they're still dead even. Yeah. <laughs> For this end. Let's see what the yeah. last arrow is going to be marked, but I think, I think it's actually going to be a 9, yeah. so I think Tyrell is going to take this end. So we're going to have a 25-24. A very interesting match. Very, very interesting match. Yeah. Definitely an interesting match. And that's that's the fun thing, because uh, Carolina has like a 46-point lead during the qualification, so you think, okay, this is going to be like fairly simple. A cakewalk, right? Yeah. You'd win this. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah but that's the dangerous bit because if you think okay this is easy i'm going to win it already started your way on your losing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you just still try you need to focus on your process yeah. on your rhythm on what you're doing on the line on what you're doing on the line and not about winning it's just shooting each and every shot right now that counts and the end result will be the end result you cannot do anything about that all you can do is shoot your shot on the sh shooting line as it is so I always tell, like, we work, I work a lot with Tyrell, and I always tell, like, I don't care what you shot score-wise, just tell me where you're happy with your shot. If you didn't hit where you wanted to hit, did you know why? And she's like, yeah, I knew why. That so is the that's most. all we need to know. And the rest will come eventually. So we're heading into, and it was... Watch out, ready? They're having some issues with the, <laughs> with the scoring now. Okay, finally it was correct. Yeah. So now we're dead even. We're 78-78 a total. And we're going into our fourth end. So now Carolina will start shooting. Should be... Yeah, we're on the wrong archer, I think. Now Tyrell oh, is... No, Tyrell is shooting. Tyrell is taking it away. Oh, it's a judge's call. Oh, that's, that's an A. Yeah, but you can see the wind is really, really picking up and affecting them now. And she has quite the reaction during the yeah. release, I know. So I don't think that's helping her a lot. She was no. quite conf or she looked more confident in the earlier ends, but now it seems like something is off. Maybe a feeling, maybe technical, something, or just plain nerves. Yeah, so that's and a good time. Tyrion, yeah, but it's a nice time there. Her. when you're shooting at an event like this and the wind is, you're fighting the wind constantly, and if you cannot get in a nice groove with fighting the wind, it will mess up everything, and you'll be left feeling like, oh, this isn't working, why isn't it not working? And then you get frustrated and you make more mistakes. Yeah, and it even messes up your rhythm. Because yeah. you always have to change up your rhythm because yeah. of the conditions change so much. That's good. Oh, that, yeah, I think it's a 10. Not, oh, they're marking it as a 10. So, but I think it's uh, maybe it's going to be. Yeah, we'll probably have a look at it. Yeah. Let's see here. That's uh, a better shot. That is a stronger shot. That yeah. Those are the kinds of shots that she. Well, we can that we can see that what she's really capable of. Yeah, like she yeah. has these kinds of shots in her. Of course she does. She's been leading the qualification like. But it's a, it's a very different feeling standing on the line right here. And like you have uh, all the audience, you have your teammates, you have friends. Maybe you've just made friends with your, with your opponent as well. And it's really, it's a hard switch living with people and um, having fun with them in the evening and then competing again against them tomorrow in the morning. Uh, every, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff to learn here by this weekend. Yeah, and for many of these, this is definitely the first time they're shooting alternating. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's the first a time completely maybe... Completely different ball game. Yeah, this is... Uh, the way the way this match is uh, being presented is almost like uh, a proper gold or a finals yeah, match yeah. In, uh, in, the wor in a World Archery event. It's done as the exactly the same, so it feels very, very big. And you can, as you can see, Carolina has a very long shooting rhythm. So I, I'm pretty sure she's very stressed about the time, even though she has no reason to be stressed because she's... But you, you don't have the time you normally have, so it's not as comfortable. So you need to some, somehow just feel like, oh, I need to do it perfectly. And then they get so stressed about doing it perfectly that they're losing their calmness and sense of just comfort on the shooting line. And you talked about this uh, this yesterday. You don't really have the time to take down a reset no. and do another draw. So you have, because time is ticking. Yeah, time and is we've, ticking. And we've already seen it when, when they're like small, when they've had small hiccups with the release or they have to redraw. We can see that the arrow goes when they're like four or three seconds yeah, left, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is, it puts the pressure on. It puts the pressure on. Like, it's not a problem, but your mind thinks it might be a problem. 
you have enough time to take it down, to start restart, unless you have a really, really long shooting rhythm. But people mostly usually don't have that long of a shooting rhythm. But it makes the fear of not having any mistakes bigger. So it makes it puts the pressure on quite a lot. So the uh, score is now 106 to 104 for Tyrol, which means that for the fifth end, for the fifth and final end, Carolina is going to take it away and start off the shooting. It's, it's, it's the it's the the camera is adjusting itself with the lighting. Well, she's holding for a very long time. Now. It's a definitely a long hold. But she she is. shoots she, a yeah, ten. She shoots ten. She's been rewarded for that. Tyrell is. Uh, yeah. That's an eight. <laughs> So now we're dead even. Again, a 10 to an 8. They're marking it as an asterisk. Oh, that's a. Oh, that right. was quite the movement, yeah. but she got it into the night. Some people just have that in their technique and it works for them, so. It doesn't have to be that big of a deal. It's always about doing the same thing all yeah. over and over. It's and another 8 material. So now there is. Uh, she's trailing by one point. Let's see what Carolina does with her final arrow of the match. And she puts it into the nine, which uh, makes it a bit, leaves the door open for Tyrell. Let's, uh, let's see if she puts ten a ten here. A then we're gonna definitely have a shoot off. Uh, or maybe if uh, the eight is gonna be marked yeah. as a nine, she might even be the winner. But it's but nine. So we need to liner. check that eight, nine liner. Yeah. I think it kind of looks up. We have here. I agree on that, but let's see what the judges say. So now, because there is some tension, we don't know, we're not entirely sure who's winning, the crowd is being very, very silent. Uh, and the live judge will call out the winner. Let's see. We have a prime spot viewing this from where we're sitting. Oh yeah, we can see yeah. everything happening on the field. Yeah. We have a prime from. Oh, the judge is actually taking out his magnification glass, so it's it has to be a bit closer He's than. Going to have uh, a proper look at that. Yeah. Let's see what he marks it up. Oh, I'm so curious. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah, uh, I'm also on the edge of my seat. I'm here more nervous when it comes to. Uh, <laughs> the archers I'm coaching than yeah. I've ever been when I'm sh on the shooting line yes. myself. <laughs> I can relate to that yeah. so much. It's so, it's <laughs> there, like there have been matches where some of my archers are shooting I was like, okay, I can't be standing here. I have to go away. Yeah. <laughs> I've been standing behind Tyrell and just like crying my eyes out because I'm so excited for it. And so it is confirmed that Carlina takes the match. Yeah. It was a really, really close, which means that it was uh, marked as an eight. It was a really, really cool it's match. A good match. It was a really, really cool match and good match to watch. Very exciting. And it just, uh, it was really close. Yeah! It, Carolina, the nerves were really getting on Carolina. And Tyrell had some really strong yeah, ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She really put on her A game, put on the pressure. So Carolina really had to fight for this one. She had to fight. She got nothing for free. And that's, um, that's the beauty of finals. That's like, nothing is Nothing is printed out. It can look good on paper, but it still needs to be shot. Every shot needs to be shot. And that's, um, it has to be done. And we're already getting ready for our next match, which is uh, compound under 18 uh, men. Next match is compound under 18 men. The gold, uh, gold final match, compound under 18 men we have here. Jonas Ripi from Finland against Ragnar Jonasson from Iceland. Yeah. Let's see if we can get up. The qualification ranking list. Let's just see how they did uh, enter qualifications. There were uh, four uh, four athletes in, uh, in this age group. And we can see they shot. Oh, Jonas has uh, had, had a stronger lead of 687 to 669. But as we saw in the previous match, that does not mean anything. It doesn't it mean anything. Yeah. Which just puts to show that the pressure is on Jonas. Quite definitely the pressure is on him. Let's see how uh, 
the semifinals and in worked out for them. And uh, quite interesting to see here. We yeah, are. It's, 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 you can see how close it, the, this yeah. match is going to be close. That is for sure. So Ragnar, Ragnar shot one point below in the previous match. So there, it was very equal. So this is going to be an interesting match to see. This is going to be a quite We're probably going to fo follow each other a lot. Yes. And again, it's exciting to see who can handle shooting like this, who can handle the nerves with the crowds and everything. Uh, and like, there's different rules from when you're shooting your normal competitions. You need to follow a specific guideline and how to shoot when you can go on, when you can go on the line and stuff like that. When you can knock your arrow, so it's very, it's very, it's very different, but also very, very fun. And the line is uh, ready. We're getting off to our. Uh First set of uh, the gold finals match. Enjoy and Jonas is taking it away. Oh, he's a calm. That, looks nice. so that was a calm, collected shot. Yeah. Very, very strong. Ragnar is quick on the trigger. Or quick with the finger on the That's trigger. That's good as well. Drop, drop to, to the seven. I'd say Jonas he looks quite stable, quite comfortable. He doesn't, or at least on the outside, he does not look no. uh, nervous at all. He, he looks not. really calm and collected. But I think Ragnar looks also very, very steady and comfortable in this uh, on this field. Yeah, wow. Iceland has been known for uh, bringing on some quite heavy hitters when it comes to the yeah. compound group. So you don't mess with them. They don't they don't really always come to play. They bring <laughs> they bring on a real fight. Right. And so we have here a triple nine. So it seems for uh, Jonas. So if Ragnar puts it then to 10 now. It's a bit Nine. low. It's a bit but low. It's a good grip. It's actually, I think we have a. I think Ragnar has a 7. It's a 7, right? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. It so like it's it. a 799. And it's going to be adjusted by the judge, I think. Yeah, probably. So you have like, when you're on the shooting line and from the practice field to the shooting line, it's on the same place. Um, but when you're coming to the shooting line and there's audience, your nerves will get a bit heightened. You might have more energy than you usually have during your normal shot frequency. So it's not uncommon for your sight to adjust. So you need to adjust your sight a bit because there's a lot more energy in your body than it normally is in the, um, during shooting. So you have all this energy and all this adrenaline that's rushing through you. So it's quite possible that it's a good group. It's just a little wrong because he's very focused and very on. We ordered some rain, but that's not until it's happening. I'm going to skip that one. So confirming the score values. You can see here that it's still there's some. Discussion. <laughs> I think it's just um, because Iceland has done this many, many times. So, and we uh, in Norway have not done it as much. So, I think the Icelandic girl is just uh, confirming to the judges how the pro protocol is, because it's the first time they're doing it as well. So, we're learning as we're going here in this event, and yeah. hopefully, it will only get better. Oh yeah, it can event. only go uphill from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're getting ready for our next end. I'm going to roll over this cable so many times today. <laughs> yeah, I already. I <laughs> Let's put it like, like that. Yeah, that works. And we're getting ready for our F next end, which you can see that Jonas is uh, leading by two points. So Ragnar is uh, taking it off, shooting the first arrow of this end. We're in the second end now. And it's blowing quite a lot, but he does not look that affected. Honestly, no, he looks really calm. Yeah, really but you see the arrow is going the other direction of the wind, so it's probably affecting him a bit. And they, the wind will push the arrow, so it's all about the experience, knowing how how much the arrow, the wind will affect your arrow, and that comes from training in the wind a lot. Well, you can really 
you see the banners yeah. behind him. It's actually <laughs> it's he quite looks good. looks so steady. Yeah, he does not move at all. It looks like. <laughs> but we can really see how the arrows are affected yeah. by the wind. It's clear that the wind is here, is playing its part here. We can see on the trees behind Jonas here that the wind is coming a bit. It's not just for consistently from one direction. It's moving around quite a bit. Nice. Has a strong grouping. Let's see here. And the oh, wind affects everyone. The bow as well. Look at that bow go. Oh yeah, now he actually he's moving as well. Yeah. So it's it's picking up quite a bit. And <laughs> he nice. shoots an eye. Yeah. That is really, really nice. And an eight. So probably Jonas uh, would probably aim off a bit because the wind was so strong. And then sometimes it doesn't affect as much or the wind will come down uh, further down on the field. Uh, so it probably won't affect the arrow as much as you see it out here because there's 40 meters from, from the archer to the target. So the wind can change a lot on those 40 meters. Definitely, definitely. And it's quite interesting to see because there are several flags on the field and we can really see that they're moving differently all yeah. of them, they're not moving in the same yeah, direction. Yeah, the training field is almost the opposite direction as well. Yeah. Which means that the wind is coming from different directions and that will affect the arrow as well. That even makes it even harder to shoot, yeah. which would really mess up your, your mental game. Just to try to just continue to stay to, to stay relaxed and in your zone and just trust your shot process is yeah. very, very, very important here. Yeah, that's, that's the problem because if the wind is affecting your mental... You, you need to have confidence in your technique because if the wind is affecting you, then it's... It's probably you need to trust that you're doing the right thing, and it's only the wind, and not trying to pick apart your technique to figure out what's wrong. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that. We, t we talked about this earlier yesterday. Actually, you have to there are 20 seconds, and you can go yeah. into an analysis mode. You don't yeah. have the time. You, you just have, have to. to yeah, you shoot. can maybe, you can maybe argue for that in the 20 seconds where you're not shooting. Yeah. That you can think about. Okay, but what you don't happened? Have 20 seconds when you're not shooting. That's, that's true. It depends on how fast your opponent's that shooting. That actually makes a yeah. lot, a lot of sense. And that can really set you off as well because maybe you're used to having those 20 seconds to evaluate and visualize the next arrow as well. And then you, you don't have that time to gather yourself. So you need to do it fast, you need to do it, just snap out of it and just focus on your next shot right now. So we have uh, Ragnar shot at 25, 25 and Jonas shot at 27, 25, which means that Jonas is still leading by two points and Ragnar is gonna start the third end of this match. Really like he, he looks like he's shot a lot in the wind because he's not moving even if his bow is moving. And he looks. I really do like his his attitude on the yeah. line. He looks very focused, very calm, very collected. It's very impressive to look at. Jonas is. Uh, he's he doing the well same thing though. He's, he's he's not looking very affected. They're not looking nervous at all. They're looking like they're just like we're here. We got this. We're going to give them a good match and we're going to have fun doing it. Yeah. Most definitely. She dra he draws it out to a, what it looks like a 7, but it's given an asterisk, so yeah, could be an 8. And if you look at the flags right now, they're not moving Ooh, one Jonas bit. Jonas is back in the yeah, middle. Yeah, that's good. Ragnar cannot give away these opportunities to Jonas. That is uh, going to put him further behind. Uh, he but is he's answering. Back. He answers with a 10, and he def he's again shooting a 25, and it really depends on the 7. But it really looks like he's <laughs> he's now there's a Isn't tendency nice. here, but Jonas is a, that's a comfortable grouping. It must be good for him to finally have a group this close yeah. again. But the wind has come down a bit as well, so that's probably affecting. And like Ragnar was aiming a bit off, prob possibly. And yeah, now for the, the previous end. Yeah, yes, and now the wind is slowing down. So this it's a lot to pay attention to as well. And once you first started to aim a bit off, it's a very uh, natural place to continue shooting. So you need to be very, very aware that, okay, if I aimed in the eighth, the previous end, I need to like, okay, what's the wind like this end? How does it feel in my body? Is it affecting me? Because you cannot keep shooting at the eighth if the wind stops. <laughs> and you need to notice that the yeah. wind is stopping. And sometimes you're so in the zone that you're not... That you forget to think yeah, about it. Yeah, you forget to think about it. But it, that's, that's where this kind of experience comes in. It's so important to have these kind of experiences to practice exactly what you're yeah. saying now. Because, again, there are 20 seconds. You need to be 
so uh, not necessarily confident, but sure about your shot process. Yeah. And that goes under the shot process as well. It's yeah. not just where you put your grip on the no, ball, no, where no. you put the release and where you anchor. But what do I do when I go, when I go to the line? How do I check? When do I check the wind? Yeah. How do I check the wind? Yeah. Do I feel it in the body? What do I do? Yeah. And you have to have a plan. Yeah. You just have to hit, okay, execute, 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 skip, execute. Yeah. But whatever it is, they have to, you have to have that. So the judges are uh, finishing up the scoring. And the agents have drawn out the arrows. And it is confirmed that to be seven. Yes. So he stays on. Uh, we can have here see uh, the end totals, which <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite cool to see. Uh, yeah. Ragnar is very shooting stable. very, very consistently here. Okay. Jonas as well. 27, 25, 27. But it gives him now a four point lead. And we have two more ends to go. And the wind is really like coming and going in different directions and strong and, and weak and stuff like that. So it's, it's hard conditions to shoot in, in addition to everything being new and alternative and with the crowd and stuff like that that they're not used to as well. Yeah, really, you really have to like try to not be affected as much as, uh, as possible when you do yeah. this. That's continues in the eight. Yeah. Uh, we we can see that Ragnar has a bit more of a spread when he shoots, but it's uh, he has a tendency to start with an eight in his yeah. first ten. Oh, that's, that's a strong a ten from Jonas. As well. So he's increasing his distance by two points for these first arrows, and Ragnar replies with a nine. That's a bit of a longer hold, though. Oh, yeah. You can see the bow moving quite a bit. Let's see, the time ticks away. And he has four seconds and he gets it uh, just. Yeah. Oh, and he yeah. puts it into the yeah. 10. That is Sometimes quite impressive. It, it's, it's worth fighting for it a lot. <laughs> but it's not something we encourage our athletes no, it's to do. Not. We really don't encourage to do that. But, but that. right here, you don't have time to do anything else. You don't have time to restart. You just need to get that shot going. Yeah, you have 20 seconds. Yeah. You just have to. Okay, it's yeah. off. I have to. Yeah. So we, uh, as coaches, we tell, no, no, restart the arrow. Because if you're holding for that long, you're pro pro most likely you ruin that arrow. Mm. But in situations like this, you just need to have to fight through it and just keep your aim in the middle. And usually it'll end up there. Yeah. Or you'll get a smack on the finger. But it's better than not shooting that arrow at all. And he was, uh, I, I wouldn't say lucky because it was a strong shot yeah. regardless. But, but it was unusual for his timing and rhythm. Definitely, definitely. So we have some asterisks here uh, about arrows being uh, checked up. Let's see what they'll be marked up as in the end. I think it's a 998. Nine nine eight. Looks like it. Yeah. And a 1010 10 8, possibly? Yeah, uh, that's, yeah so that's, more, that's most definitely an 8. I cannot see that becoming a 9. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, well sometimes the, the camera angle is a bit off it's and tricking the, the you, arrow true. is a bit fatter than you think and sometimes. Oh, we've all done that. We, we, yeah. We're on the line, we're shooting and like, ah, that's a comfortable one. And yeah. then you get up to the target and you see, oh, Lord, this was not even close to what Especially I thought. Especially when you're shooting on uh, hay. Oh, yeah. That's oh, <laughs> I've been <laughs> shooting 18 meters compound. Like, okay, that's a perfect 30 right there. And you come to the target and it's like, oh, that's a wild 27. That was not what I was expecting. So we're getting off to our uh, <laughs> fifth and final end. Jonas has a six point lead. And uh, Ragnar has quite the task on closing that gap. Let's hope he finds the zone. I still do like how he's on the line. He yeah, looks very he calm and collected. So calm. Yeah. And he and starts with it. He puts on the pressure. Let's see how Jonas replies. He's been shooting quite comfortably. Puts a nine, so uh, giving away one point for at least those two arrows. Let's see how Ragnar replies to this. And he oh. continues, he puts on the pressure. That's a good strong shot. And he draws it out to the eight, yeah. so he's actually starting to give away some points here. Let's see how it's Ragnar. Never over until it's over. There's and three points now. Three points. Let's see what he f what the final arrow has here, and he oh, puts it to the eight. eight. Yeah. That's a shame. But seven let's to win. seven to win. Yes. And it's a quite yeah. Yeah. 
So again, here we have the situation that it's uh, most definitely <laughs> Jonas is going to win this yeah. match. But it was really cool to see Ragnar putting on his A game for this last yeah, enemy. Really, really. And it's quite interesting to see because this was the first. Let's go here and see all of the ends. And you can really see that Ragnar picked it up. Yeah, he was trying ends. hard. He was not giving up. He was not surrendering. And I like that attitude a lot. It's never over until it's over. And you, if you're not winning, at least know that you put everything out there and then it's just home to practice more and get better and it takes time and these are young athletes here they have all the time in the world to continue and training become great and f for hopefully and most definitely this, this was and is a good experience for them but amazing not experience and not if for anything else than at least a very good memory yeah and it looks like it looked like he had very good shots as well it, like he looked comfortable he looked like he had fun he looked like he was enjoying himself out there and that's the most important thing in my experience at least and your focus is at least when I shoot and what I tell my artists, I like to focus on the experience. This is just a, another competition. Yeah, it's a Nordic Youth Championship and that feels very, very big. But at the end of the day, it's another competition. And there's <laughs> yeah. lots of competitions. And at the end of the day, you're still just shooting an arrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's and if one you're arrow. Able, if you're able to boil it down to that and not being affected by yeah. that, you can actually... Uh, I think it helps experience. you quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. And the winner is confirmed. Uh, Jonas. Jonas wins 133 to 129. They give each other a, a handshake. handshake. It's so important to like respect each other as an athlete and like say like good or bad. I had fun shooting with you today. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And he really, again, Ragnar in the final end, really put on the yeah, pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jonas kept his, his calm, and even though he was a bit out to to uh, to decide, his his lead was that was that big that he could just comfortably could uh, yeah. bag this. And I'm S curious, like we talked about yesterday, I had a world championship uh, match that was streamed that I was shooting consistently to the left. I'm curious if he's going to think back on this match and think, hmm, maybe I should have moved my sights. Why did I not? Move oh, my sights? that is a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting into recurve under 16. Women's final, yeah. And this is quite fun because this is the biggest class of all the competition. There were 26 participants. So we have had uh, these two girls right here that are coming on the field in any moment have really fought for their spot in this final. Uh, and we also have um, uh, the world, the ranked number one, uh, Hala, and Balabeni was ranked number three. So she is not the second one on uh, the ranking score. And these so are some quite strong scores. Yeah, they're very, very even as well. There's uh, not a lot of take to give, not a lot of points. This is going to be a very, very even match. So there are four points difference here between the top three, which is not a lot. It's, it's not, not a, a lot, lot on 72 arrows, not at all. Let's see uh, for how the, the matches went. So the Wilda won on her first match 6-2 very comfortably. Maria had a, ooh, it looks like hell. That was quite a bit of a yeah, match. Yeah, that's Six, a shoot-off right That's there. a shoot-off. Let's hope we get one of those today. Yeah. That would be great. That would be great fun. Maybe my nerve can handle it. <laughs> <I'm not sure>. <laughs> <Let's hope. laughs> well, I think Red Cross is here somewhere. So if something yeah. were to happen, they would come and help you. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, good. that's great. <laughs> So here we have uh, Maria winning her semifinals six to zero, and Vilde winning her match six to two, which shows that. But it's also very fun because you said comfortably with six two. There's nothing comfortable about shooting set scores. It could be one point lead in each set. It doesn't have to be a comfortable big lead, even if you're losing six zero. It could be a. We could be talking about millimeters here from the line. That is actually a good point. Yeah. That is a very good point. And this is now we're moving into set shooting, which yeah. means that they both shoot three arrows, and the one with the highest score on gets those three arrows. on those three arrows gets two points. Yeah. So it could be very. You could also see that the archer with the biggest total score is losing because of the way when they shot their arrows. Yes. Which is also a big difference from compound. 
we will have will the starting. Oh, this is all all Norwegian final. Yes, it's an all Norwegian final. And so we have she's a left-handed archer. You can see that she's uh, drawing with her left hand. Oh, she needs to. She took down over there. So she's actually facing the crowd. Face first. So she's making eye contact with the crowd during the entire match. That's something else as well. Oh, that's a good. That is a nine ten, yeah. That's a better shot. Seven on the other side. But the wind is picking up quite a lot. And uh, these girls are very young, so they're probably their bows are probably a lot. Uh, they're lighter. Less, uh, lighter, yeah. They're definitely uh, oh that but she's yeah. but I, I would also like to say that Maria looks for her her technique looks a bit cleaner a bit uh, uh, stronger and you can really see it pays off she has yeah. a nice rhythm a nice comfortable uh, anchor she's uh, quite comfortable at full draw this is uh, definitely a longer hold oh but look my at lord that group. lord what an opening yeah that is. Uh, that is for you, you know. That is that is that is how you want to start. Susie. That is how you want to start. And the nice thing right now is that uh, Vilda's round doesn't really matter that much because once the score is scores, she yeah. just start over again. And that's the good thing about um, set shooting in that way, because right now it's just 23, 20, 29, which would be in compound quite a gap to catch up on. Yes. But in recurve, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, because now you can see. I highly doubt that this is going to change, but I would quite comfortably say that Maria gets the two points here. Y yeah, no, <laughs> no matter if Maria is down <laughs> and the other will they is up, she will still win this oh, set yes, point. Oh yes, yes. But so that's a good feeling to be Maria right now, to have sh having shot your shots and getting a grouping like that on an event like this. Just. Oh, it makes me all warm in my stomach. <laughs> 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 I know the feeling, just knowing that, okay, I did my thing and it worked and I got pay I got good payment for it with that grouping right there. It's a good feeling. You can also see that they're both uh, they're both talking to their coaches. Yeah. And uh, Maria looks, she looks a bit uh, more relaxed on the line. And we're getting ready for our next end. You can see... Uh, See them getting themselves ready. Yeah. The bows. Builder looks a bit cold, and it's important to stay warm so your muscles don't tense up, especially when shooting recur because it always relies on that dynamic movement all the time. Yeah, and the wind is, it is quite, it's, it's, it's quite chilly today. Yeah, I would it say is. it's we're we're summer, and I think it's 18 or 19 degrees, but it's because it's of the not wind, feeling like that. No, because of the wind, it's actually it's 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 chilly, and it was raining quite heavily last night. It was supposed to rain this morning. Oh, oh we can see her being her affected by the off. wind. Oh. That is something. Okay, Maria is... Uh, well, I know that that is... Maybe that goes to her advantage. But even she pulls it out to the yeah. seven here. It's blowing a lot. But that could be a problem for Vilda. Because she's, if she's used to shooting with her hat all the time. It's like a safety blanket. Possibly, like some archers have these rituals, and you, you need to have green laces. I need to push this button three times. Like, some you have your rituals. Yeah, you have, you your, have your rituals. You have your stuff. Yeah. If you're lacking your hats, and if you're like she has her hair loose, the wind can blow in her face. There's a lot of things that would. She doesn't look affected at all. No, She's it's shooting it's her shots, doing her thing. It's quite good to see. She does. She did a nice three-shot arrow sequence here. Oh, we can see that bow moving, and oh. it puts it in the one. But there was, there was quite a hefty bow move there yeah, from Maria. Yeah, the we wind grabbed that. Really grabbed very her bow. Much. So uh, Vilda definitely is going to take this end. Yeah. And uh, even though there was a spread in her shooting as well, Maria's end, previous end was very, very impressive. Yeah. We could, it could almost, we could almost say that maybe it got to her that she was even maybe, maybe she was a bit surprised about yeah. how well the previous yeah. end went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. possibly. I think the last arrow there though was caught off by the wind. And Definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't have been that bad without that arrow. But just goes to show you, it's not over until <laughs> it's over. It's never over until the last arrow is on the target. We should like. 
keep track on how many times we say that. It's not over until it's over. It's, it's going to be quite an amount of time because, but it, it's we're, we're making but fun of it, but it's it's actually a valid point. It's, it's a valid, valid point, point, and it's very easily overlooked, and especially when you're on the shooting line because you're just annoyed that that arrow you shot three ends before, or your opponent is leading by a lot. So it's um, it's a mantra that I, I like. To I like to say it a lot because people need to hear it a lot. You need to believe it. You need to like get it <laughs> really like into your brain, tattooed in there permanently because you can never ever give up the match. It's not over until it's over. No, no, no. So as Vilda took uh, this end, uh, Maria's gonna start the next end. I think uh, because it's 2-2. Two -two? Yeah, good yeah. point, good point, good point. I think. You can, see, you can actually see that Vilda, she dropped, uh, she dropped the hat for this end and yeah. she's put up... Uh, her hair tie, yeah. Yeah. So she was probably not uh, needing that hat as much no. as, I, as uh, she... And she starts off with, uh, with a strong 9. And Maria replies yeah. with a strong 9. Let's hope that maybe that they got the nerves out of their system now, because this was a strong start. Sometimes and you just need that bad end yeah. to get it out of the way and then just keep on shooting good shots. Because... Oh, this oh, is good. Yeah, it's very, very this good. This is good. It's an even match. Oh, we can see that she really has the wind on her face now. Yeah. No, I mean the sun. <laughs> yeah. But she managed... Oh, this is oh, a this strong, is yeah. strong end. Maybe we'll get a shoot up in this match. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. Oh, oh, that is very strong. So we both have 27 here, which means it's a draw, which means that both get one oh, point. No, 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 no. Yeah. And we're at 3 3. So still equal. A dead even end. And this sun is picking up and it's going back, and it's a, it's a lot for the archers to deal with. And. Uh, it's not that big of a deal in recurve because you don't have the scope that can kind of blind you if the sun is hitting it correctly. But it's still the sun in your face. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's still the sun it's in your face. It's never comfortable to stare at the sun and have it in your face all the time. And then you have archers who shoot with glasses or sunglasses, and it's very different. Like, I don't think I would recommend it shooting with sunglasses during this because if the sun fades away, it can cause some changes if you're not come to used to it. Uh, so it's personal preference. Yeah, most from definitely. everyone. But if you're used to shooting it with a hat and the sun will, and it will provide you shade from the sun at the angle it's at, then it it would shake most archers to lose it, yeah. especially during the shot. So we're now getting ready for our next end, our fourth end of the day. Or of the match, I mean. And it will be two more ends because none of the girls can win it this end. Yeah. So regardless of how this goes, there will be two more ends at the minimum. Oh, she did not oh. look happy about that shot. We could really tell even before the she arrow hit. She did not hit the target with that one. No, that she had the target, but not the paper. Yeah, it the was. Uh, that is definitely a miss. And Maria right. continues. And now Villages has to reset. Let's hope she gets some strong shots in. And now you can see her fringes are in her face. Oh, she that's to down. maybe that's it. Yeah. That is probably what happened. And the clock is ticking, but she did a strong quick oh, shot and a that's nine. That's a good nine to gather yourself back. Yes, it's that a was a very strong thing to do. And it's important for her own confidence and feeling about yeah. her shot sequence. Let's hope she can put it in the nine as well for this one and just forget the miss. And just keep going, and she yeah, does. Yeah, she does. That's she really, does. really good. That's because of a good mental archer. Yes. Trying to shake off a miss like that, that is not always oh. easy. It's a longer hold. It, oh, and but she puts it in the X, so it did not matter. She's tickling the spider, as it seems, as yeah. well. That is, uh, that is a, a strong, that oh. is a strong end. And it feels good to walk back from the line knowing that she shot that. Yeah, it seems like she uh, she was pointing to uh, there was something on the field that bothered her. But you could really see that 
Coming again, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Coming back from a miss like that, you could really see that she did not feel the shot. You yeah. could really see her even like the second the the, the arrow less le had left the bow, she really did not look comfortable. And she, you could really see she did not like the shot. Yeah, and it's very, very <laughs> important and strong of her to be able to get herself in that short amount of time because Maria, as we see, has a very fast sh shooting frequency, so yeah. we don't have a lot of time to gather yourself mm. but until you're shooting your next arrow. That was a quite strong end from uh, from Maria as well. I think it was a strong end from Wilda as well. Actually, yes, yeah. that's that's a, that's a very good point. It was one bad arrow, but it's it's one arrow. Yes. The rest was very, very good, and picking yourself back up after that is very, very strong. Yeah. And we can really see the sun is, uh, <laughs> is really, really strong now. Yeah. So they both have wind, which makes the bow move, and they have sun in their faces right now. And probably very light bows and light arrows that will fly away with the wind very easily. Yeah. So Vilda is trailing. And is going to start this next end. Continues. Yeah, she's she's a little low. She's a little bit low. I would almost recommend her to just do a couple of turns on the side to just make sure. And uh, Maria continues with the yeah. nine. And that's where you have like knowing your coach and knowing your archer comes in because maybe the, the coach can sell them or maybe just adjust the side for them as yeah, well. Definitely. If you have a really really good connection with your coach. This is a strong strong. Oh, that's end. good. That is a 9 and a 10. So Vilda now just uh, hope. Vilda really needs to shoot a good shot for hopes of make getting in a shoot off. Yeah. So 26, uh, Maria needs a 7 to win. Yeah. I don't See, think she's, she's been. Oh, and the wind is picking up. Oh, she has to fight for this. This oh. is not going to get easy. Oh, she and it's gets, a 7. She gets a 7, which is, ba she, which is what she needed. That was a pretty, pretty close. That is, yeah. <laughs> we could really see the wind grabbed her board. She was, she really had to fight for this. And you see, there's no cheering because the people are not entirely sure who's won because it's so close. Yeah. You can see the line judge there marking the arrows, calling them out. So that's a tie. The judge marks the winner as Maria. But uh, you can almost see a sigh of relief yeah, in, in, her, yeah, in her body. Yeah. That, that last arrow got where she needed it yeah. to be, though. And it's nerve wracking standing up there and waiting for confirmation. And you know, you need to still be in your song. You're pretty sure you won, but you cannot take that victory before it's announced from the judge. Yeah. It's a nerve wracking. I'm sure that felt like a very, very long time for Maria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and th that last shot, my lord. You know, oh, I don't need to. Okay, I only need to shoot a seven. Yeah. It's but you, you only need to shoot a seven. Need to shoot. And, and that then the top wind. is. That thought is very, very dangerous. Oh, yes. Because you're not supposed to be focusing on that. Just shoot a good shot. You know where it's going to end if it's a good shot. Uh, but then if you're thinking about keeping safe, then your focus is elsewhere. Yeah, and, yeah, and then and then that wind as well will, will affect you a lot. Always stay in the moment. That yeah, is what yeah. we want to do. Keep your focus. Just shoot your shot. So now we're heading off into a recurve under 16 men. So here we again have a big uh, gap between um, the first and uh, even from Norway and Christian from Denmark. Even shot a 666 during qualification and Christian shot a 592. And there we have it, yeah. 
So it's a big gap between the first, uh, between Evan and second place, and then there's a small gap down to third place. He was already beaten second place to get to where, to get his position here. 13 archers in this class as well means that there's been a quite a bit of fight to get here. Let's see how uh, the knockout phases went for uh, both of them. We can see that Evan won his first match 6-0. and oh. And uh, Christian won, uh, okay, also, well, he won 7-1. Seven, seven Evan won his next match 6-0 and oh as well. Christian had a bit of more of a fight there, so uh, this is going to be quite interesting to look at how this match progresses because it really we don't see the scores here, no. but based on just the results here, it looks like even had a cruising through his his, yeah. his matches. So let's let's hope and let's see how he if he's going to be affected when he's in this final, because again this is also the first time it's for him that it's being televised, um, and during a proper world archery. Uh, yeah, pro 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 protocol. Yeah, yeah, and shooting alternate, alternating shooting as well. It's it's very very different, and especially with recurve recurve archers usually have a very very can have a very fast technique. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so definitely. that can really mess up with your rhythm if you're used to having a lot of time in between each shot. Yeah. So it's a completely different ball game. So the range is being cleared. And we're getting uh, w underway with our next match of the day, the recurve under 16 man gold final. And it looks like Ivan is gonna start it off and shoot the first arrow. And he starts, starts strong with a 10. Let's see how Christian replies to this. No, a good nine, that's a good shot. Oh, he's fighting with the wind. Yeah, drops it a bit. You could also, you could saw, you saw really the bow how it dropped in his Mercedes. Oh, he's being, it. he's being grabbed by the wind. Let's see how he fares. Oh, that's, that was definitely. But it looked the wind. like a really nice shot. Yeah. It probably was get cut off by the wind. Yes. That's oh, strong. Good. That's a strong, strong end. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's moving quite a bit from the yeah. wind there. So this is uh a six. yeah nine six six. Oh yeah, that's it's being marked up as a six, and I think that is correct. But that is most definitely a comfortable two and zero for uh, for Evan for this first end. Yeah. It's very two very very different techniques. Like Christian looks like he's just super calm and chill and just like I'm here, I'm having fun. I'm just gonna shoot my shot and have fun with it. And yeah. even looks like he looks like yeah, he's a guy who has something to lose and something to prove. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, I agree, it looks like well he has more pressure he on He has! Him. He yeah. shot a lot more during uh, drug qualification. He has won all his matches very yeah. comfortably, score wise at least. Yeah. And it's so important to remember to have fun with this. Oh yes. Yeah. Like, just enjoy the moment and learn Don't be too serious something. about no, it. No, Don't no. be too serious about just it. Just shooting arrows, that's what you love to do. So just keep on doing that and have fun with it. And there we have our uh, chairman of judges. Is that what it's called? Yes. Head judge for Head the competition? Head judge. Head judge of the competition. Daddy, on the line right there. I think they're enjoying themselves quite a lot here as well. Uh, getting to judge matches like this is not something that we're used to, and the judges are getting valuable experience as well. And I think they're having a lot of fun with it as well. Oh, yeah. I, I hope that the nerves that we saw yesterday have gone down because it seems like they're all of them are enjoying themselves yeah. a bit more now. It seems like they're having have this gather. Yes. So we're continuing, and Christian is going to start shooting as he's trailing. And we hear the cheering from the Danish team. I love that. 
And I know that Denmark is very, very good at that, the cheering part. Yeah. I remember that from uh, when I went internationally with, uh, uh, with the national team. They're always, when we watched them, the Danes were always very, very good at cheering on their own archers. Some archers like that, some archers do not like that. And we have a 9 and a 9. But I have to agree with you that Christian, his, his technique looks very calm, oh, collected, like and just strong. Oh, it's that's a, a good strong attack. shot. You could really see how he kept the stability throughout the shot. Avon really has to fight for this now. Oh, he's, that's a long hold. And a big movement. He has a calm, he's keeping his calm composure. Yeah. And a strong shot. Oh, that is a strong, strong shot. He's shooting really, really good technique. Yes. And a 9 from Even. So Christian will take this set and we're setting 2 2. I really like watching Christian shoot, actually. Yeah, this, yeah I agree. Yeah. His technique is very, very yeah. nice. It's very, very clean. Very chill. He just looks like he's so chill. Ooh. <laughs> I'm rolling off here. Yeah, so we have we have new chairs here. We have new, new chairs. chairs here today <laughs> as for the practice session la yesterday. We had a... Uh, well, I broke a chair. Yeah, you broke I a broke chair. a chair. Laughing <laughs> too hard. We had too much fun, apparently. So we had to make sure that we got some proper chairs today yeah. because we are not sitting still. We, we are, are moving around quite still. a bit. <laughs> On the edge of our seat almost all the time. It's hard to sit still when it's this exciting. Oh yes, definitely. So scores are confirmed and we can see flags are being raised in the crowd which is really cool to see. Yeah. Both the Finnish and the Danes. The Danes and the Norwegians are trying, okay, no, we're having the flag at the highest. No, yeah, we're having the we flag are the, the highest. highest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. I that's think it's cool. the Norwegian uh, person is standing on a the chair. They're, I think they're both standing on the chair trying to get the flag as high as possible, showing the most uh, national pride. Definitely. Oh, they're yeah, having a competition on their own in the, <laughs> in the crowd there, right there. So, there we have it. We have a 2 2. It's a draw even. And we're starting on with our uh, third end. And Avon is uh, taking it away. And he continues uh, where he left off. He just keeps on his this, this rhythm. I think he's, he'll comfortably keep it in the yellow. Yeah, Christian yeah, yeah. with his calm and collected and technique. Wind oh, yeah. yep, wind picking up a bit, yes. Oh, but it still looks very, very good. Yeah, that was definitely the wind that caught yeah. it there. Even is, uh, let's see how he does. Oh, he puts it 10. on the 10 ring. I just really like his draw. Yeah. It's very calm, it's very smooth. That's a high eight. And now even as even is being affected by the wind, but you can see the stabilizer moving quite a bit, and the clock is ticking, so he has to get through, and he and puts it good. in the ten. Yeah, that's good. So that's a twenty-nine. So regardless of a Christian shoots yeah. now, that's uh, going to this end is going to even. Yeah, and this is a very very good example of uh, shooting good shots and just. Maybe it's just not your day. Mm. It, like it looks very, very good. It looks very calm. I really, really like watching Christian shoot, and uh, the wind is probably picking up his arrows. And it's so important to not stop questioning your technique on the shooting line if it's not hitting exactly where you want it to, mm. especially in winds and weather like this. Hello. <laughs> And you see the competition between the the, the flag bearers. Right yeah. There is a flag. They have to switch up. <laughs> they have to switch up who is who can hold the flag the highest. <laughs> and for the longest, who is keeping it up? Yeah, the Nor Norwegians just switched the flag carrier. They're giving it. They're all there. The yeah. crowd and the archers. Yeah, they would need a even taller person. 
Find the tallest person. Yeah, find the tallest team. person available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're underway for our fourth end of <laughs> this match. Evan is uh, leading 4 to 2, which means that Kristen is going to take away the next start of the next end. Keeps his calm composure. Puts it very strong into the 10. And you can see it that when Christian's shooting, that the bow is directly hitting, shading him from the sun, and that's going to change in just the next round, possibly. Yeah. So, 9 and a 10. They're putting an asterisk on Christian's arrow. I think that was pretty clear. Yeah, that's pretty clear. That's, 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 that's yeah. a 10. Yeah, that is that not is an asterisk. Cause it's maybe uh, it's because, uh, maybe because, sure because of the X. X. Yeah. Drops it into the eight. Yeah, now it's getting really, really exciting. It's getting interesting because yeah. now they've had one end each where they did really strong, then they fell off a bit, then they did really strong, and then they yeah. fell off. That looks good. And he puts it into the eight. Yeah. But it, so that leaves, so leaves the door open. If Evan puts a ten here now, they will he'll, split draw, the set. he'll draw the set. That's a longer hold. Oh, that's a long, oh, that's hold. A long hold. The clock is ticking. That's a seven eight, yeah, seven eight nine, nine. So Christian takes this set and we're dead even on yeah. four four. Oh exciting, exciting times. And here we can see how the match has been has progressed. It's uh Evan took it two points for a very strong end. Yeah. And then uh, he followed up with a weaker end, but Christian came back with came with them with a strong end and yeah. then they switched places yet again. And that's how the match has been progressing so yeah. far. So let's hope they both bring it this end and we can get a shoot-off. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. That would be great if we could have a shoot-off. Hoping for a shoot-off all day. We're going to keep on badgering about that. Because oh, yes. We want that shoot -off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very interesting match and very, very interesting <laughs> to flag right. competition right now. <laughs> it's still going on. Yeah. The flag competition is still going strong, going on. Norway does have two flags, so there's a little one. Oh, there's the a tiny the flag in the yeah. corner there. So <laughs> it's 2 0. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that the Danish people have brought a small flag. So we're in Norway. <laughs> there is a competition <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even see that. <laughs> One of the team managers is coming over, just reminding them to be careful. Yeah. And they're having a flag competition. Yeah. Okay. So, so everyone is having fun on this field today. Oh, that is great. So even he's starting shooting. Yes. And he starts off by putting it. He nine continues nine. where he usually does, and with the first arrow, puts it comfortably into the nine. Christian with his comp technique, probably. He answers with a strong nine yeah, as well. So we're equal to this arrow by arrow. And that's what we want. Yeah, we that want. We the, want this. We want this if they want it, we're not sure, but we definitely we want it. We do it. It's good to be. And she, he, another nine. Let's see if Christian can respond to that. It looks good. Oh, he draws it out to the eight, eight. which gives. Uh, if Evan now puts it into the ten, that is him winning the match. That's a lot of pressure. From that now. is a lot of pressure, and he knows it. I'm pretty sure that he knows it. He puts That's it into the nine. nine. So, the case now is if can Christian shoot a ten here, and we will have a shooter. And he oh, does okay, not. Nine. So, so even wins this match. That was a strong and a fun match. It was a very fun match. I'll congratulate the winner, but I really wanted to see a shootout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were both fighting very, very hard for that. And again, that's fun because um, Christian shot a lot lower during qualification than Evan did. So on paper, it looked like to be an easy match, but this was not. This <laughs> was easy not match an easy match. At all. No, no, no. Even really had to fight for this. Yeah. And you could really tell by all. If we just take a quick look at the brackets again, yep. we can see how this was definitely the hardest match he had. Yeah. As uh, let's see if it is uh, if it, it, is, it has updated, and he had six and zero for his first match, six and zero for his second match, 
and now it went to 6-4, which he, re he really had to fight for this. And not all archers are prepared for that fight either, because they're used to like shooting 6-0. Some people can cave under the pressure of having it 4-4, because they know that right now I need to bring my A game. I need to perform, I yeah. need to perform. And there we have the confirmation from the judge. Evan takes the gold medal in the recurve under 16 men. And Norway division. takes the flag <laughs> competition as well as one competitor, one athlete is standing on the shoulders of another. Yeah, he's a bit Maybe taller. Power. He's a bit taller. They've used the tallest person they know and put a small person on top of him. <laughs> so now they are winning that competition as well. They're bagging it all today. <laughs> yeah, they're bagging it all today. <laughs> Okay, so this match is uh, concluded, and we're heading into recurve under 18 women. And now we are going to move back to the next target on 50 meters. And recurve under 18 women have also have a very interesting. Uh, interesting final as well because uh, the Austria on target number two was only number six qualifying. Oh! Geneva Ballista. That so is... That yeah. really goes to show. That's very interesting. And yeah, she's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything can happen in the finals. She's me. She's uh, heading up with uh, the number one uh, seed from uh, Sweden who shot 631. 631 to 490. That is yeah. quite a bit of a gap it's there. A quite a bit of a gap. But Suneva has shown that she is she to be here. She shot her own matches. She's won everyone. So it's gonna be a very, very interesting match to watch. It could also be that uh, that's it. Some archers are finals archers. Yeah. We don't have to forget that some really do a lot yeah, better yeah, under yeah. the during matches. They do poorly during qualifications, or they just know they don't matter as much. No. So they just we're, I'm here for the finals, and now yeah. the Swedes are doing the same thing, and the Swedish flag is being <laughs> raised to the top in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they have a taller uh, <laughs> person, number one. Yes. So Ingrid's uh, trace or trail to the finals, which is, was a 6 and 0, 6 to 2 against Jade Hillala, and now for the final, we don't know the result yet. So Nova Balista won very comfortably. Uh, her first match, 6 and 0, or yeah, score wise. Yes. Yeah, score wise, comfortably. Set point wise. Yes, good set point set wise. Set point wise. Yes, that's actually very, very important. And Sineva Ballista had a shoot off in her semi finals. So uh, that was a big of a fight. That was a fight. That was definitely a fight. So we're getting ready. They're still. No, they're still preparing the. F yeah, the field is still yeah. being prepared a bit. The cameras and. We have to move uh, move the targets backwards as we go along today because the distance increases by the age group. But in the battle of the flags, it looks like it's Sweden that's taking a very comfortable lead right there in the crowd. Archer number one. Archer number two. But they're having fun with it. They're looking around, <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking after taller people to fly on top of their shoulders off. Who can bring the flag to the top? Who, Who can bring the flag <laughs> to the top? <laughs> and we're on our way for our uh, for our first set of this match. Recurve under 18 women. And Ingrid will start shooting. She just wants to get it going. And that's a good fast shot. A little low. Oh, that trailed a long way to the four. But this is the good thing about set shooting because you can have it's a good nine from Ingrid. You can have that one arrow and then you can just readjust. You know it doesn't matter. You've lost this set al already, possibly. So you can just focus on getting your groove back and yeah. getting back in the yellow. She's getting closer. Ingrid is shooting quite calm. Oh, that's a strong yeah. end. That's a strong, strong strong end. But now the pressure is off Sinova on this arrow, she can just shoot a good shot and yeah. feel and good. And she does, she, she does, does. she She's moves towards the center of the target, which is important for her own confidence for the rest of this match. <laughs> but as you said, Ingrid has, has put this in the bag for this round yeah. at least. And that's a 
important th aspect of it as well, like knowing when you can relax your shoulders and just say, okay, this round, this set is go is gone. I can just relax, get back to my rhythm, just have a few practice shots. Imagine myself on the practice field, just getting back into my groove and in my zone and just the good feeling of uh, the shot. So we see the Swedish have a, a mascot flag. <laughs> they have a well. mascot. They have. Is that a panda? This that is a panda. Yeah, that a is Swedish a panda flag. <laughs> <laughs> so they're stepping up the game from the small Norwegian flag that we had against Denmark, and bringing in a panda on the game. You know what? By this, by this, they ended. They're already winning the crowd. <laughs> the panda is definitely winning the crowd here. <laughs> And the panda even has the f the feder the cap of the or the, the hat from the, the federation. Yeah, there is a feder they have a federation hat, which is uh, basically a target, but it's it's super cute, super cool. Is that a federation flag? Is, is that a federation hat for Sweden? Yeah, oh. they they have they have their own merchandise, and it's really really cool. Oh, well, that's fun. So it's officially officially. It's the it's round. it's it's officially officially the Swedish mascot now. They have to bring the panda for the next competitions as yeah. well. <laughs> the panda and the flag wars are staying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the flag wars, that's what we should call this. Yeah, <laughs> it's the flag wars. <laughs> and we're heading off into our next end. So never will stop and possibly get a good shot going and just feel good again. Yeah, we saw her move uh, closer to uh, the target center during the previous end. Good fast shot. Yeah. Puts it in the seven. Honestly, uh, to me, Sunova looks a bit more relaxed. Yeah. Ingrid looks a bit more tense. But that's been the common trade here uh, between the target, the Arsus on target one. Yeah. The underdog is uh, has, has a tendency to be. More yeah, it's chilling a bit more. Yeah, yeah that's like, I agree. That's actually the perfect term. Yeah. <laughs> Taking a bit, being a bit more chill. But she is yeah, he puts shots. it in the nine. Very good timing. And that again puts pressure on Suneva because Ingrid is shooting so fast, yeah. it might mess up Suneva's timing as well. Yeah, that's actually a good yeah. point. That is uh, it's a good group. She's it's a very good group. I would just for this now. I would just uh, move the site. Yeah. That's uh, comfortably enough to uh, take this set. That's good. Securing the back. Securing the back. So we have a 4 0 now for this uh, match. <laughs> and the panda is being held up. It's participating. <laughs> it's participating. <laughs> no, but this just goes to show how much fun a competition and an event like this is, and how much fun the archers and the competitors have, even when they're not shooting. Like, they're just enjoying themselves. They're meeting different people from different dates. They're making friendships from across the Nordic stations. And it's really, it's a good, it's good That is what we experience. want. That yeah. is what we want. Something is happening in the Norwegian group right now. Let's see. Uh, are they? Yeah, they're, oh, they're trying oh. to build. They're trying to, they're trying to get even higher now. <laughs> and they are. They, they have are. moved up and stepped up their game. <laughs> It looks like some of these guys are from cheerleading because <laughs> now they're using some technique I've seen in cheerleading yeah, to get yeah. the viewers to even, even are higher. Are going to stand there all day? That's got to be exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> but they took the lead. Oh, he's, he's all, they're almost toppling. It's almost toppling. Okay, so we're, looks like we're getting ready for c to continue our match. Oh, we... <laughs> having trouble focusing on yeah, we are, yeah, now. We're, 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 okay. Archery, that's what archery, we're here for. That's what we're here okay. for. <laughs> <laughs> so Suneva will start shooting again. Uh, the Swedes are tired, they have to... Oh, no, archery, right. Yeah, archery. Ar <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so Suneva is gonna open uh, this end again. I think it's quite possible that Suneva has a weaker bow. Uh, and then gets affected by the wind a lot. Oh, that's a very good point. Dealing with a bit older women, ladies here, girls here, and uh, the the higher we get in the recurve division, possibly the stronger the bow will be. So th I think that's quite possible. And we see here that Sineva is definitely capable of bringing yeah, her game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she shot her she shot herself here. She deserves to be here. Yes. No doubt about that. 
That's a bummer. That's that. Yeah. That was really sting. Let's hope she can uh, get herself back in the zone. Yeah, just that. forget that arrow and continue her process. It's never oh, over till it's over. Check. <laughs> 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 okay, let's see how she handles this. Again, I think this is uh, going to be too tight. But yeah, that's a seven. Yeah. So uh, four to win. I. And she puts it in a 10. That's a good feeling, knowing that you can just shoot your shot. Even though you don't have to shoot it in 10, you can still just say, yeah, I did that. I did that. I did that. So there was, this was a clear cut and this was, uh, the underdog was uh, so, yeah, you, yeah. quite, quite, quite uh, thoroughly, that is. But she brought her game. It was really cool to see. And Sweden wins the match, but Norway has not surrendered on the flag wars at all. Oh, that's, yeah, we can see <laughs> the Norwegian flag is on top there for now. Let's see, are they gonna. The panda is there as well. No, but it's a good experience, even if you like, just know that you shot good shots, had you had your fun. She so never did not look upset at all, and I love to see that, that you can just be having fun, even yeah. if it's not going like 100% in the yellow all the time. Just enjoy yourself. <laughs> and now the Swedes brought two more flags! <laughs> so what they're lacking in height, they make up in the quality. <laughs> quantity, yeah. Yeah, quantity, yeah. <laughs> So now we will have recurve under 18 men, and we have the same um, the same uh, thing right here because on target one where there will be James Enkberg, and he was actually qualified as number four against Robin Hansen from Sweden on target number two, who qualified number two. So. In order to get into this final, Jens actually had to beat the number one ranked archer in his class. And that's already a very solid win there, so this should be a very interesting match. Let's have a quick look at uh, the brackets and how they evolved. Benjamin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's watching a video of, of himself for uh, ru ruining the chair from yesterday so <laughs> <gonna be> <laughs> during practice. <laughs> I'm really glad we had that uh, that test session yesterday. Yeah, it was very very important as well for us to get into the groove as well, and then destroying that chair apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, they are switching up the targets on the field and getting ready. We're getting slowly getting ready for our next end. And we see Jens uh, was not top seeded in target one, um, but he shot his way here, and I love that. He's he's the underdog here, even though he's on target number one. So he beat Elias Rosenquist, which was seeded as number one with six four. And it will be a very, very interesting match, even though there are gaps in their qualifying score. It just goes to show that score doesn't mean anything. Score doesn't mean anything. It's all about the sets when you get to the finals. And we're getting ready for our match. Jens Hengst, a good nine. That's a strong nine. And a good shot. Well, that was a bit of a shake. Yeah. Let's hope he recuperates. Sometimes you just need to get a few shots out of your system and then just. That was a that very, is strong. very fast That was shot. a strong shot. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because they have a practice field just next to this where they have been shooting, but it's so much different coming yeah. to the finals range and doing doing the shots here. You're still, in all practical sense, doing the exact same thing, yeah. but it's just everything around is just puts so much more pressure on you. You have to trust your sequence. You just have to be in yeah. the moment. 
Well, that opens it up. A bit. That opens it up. Yeah, you, you just need to shoot your shot. Don't mind your surroundings or what's going on around you at all. Yeah. And some people do that very well. Others don't. And that's a seven. And in the in a shoot when you're shooting like this as well, we have a speaker telling the scores. So Robin knew before that shot that the door was uh, open a bit. Definitely. Yeah, and that affects you as well if you're listening to the to the sounds and to the speakers talking and you, just, you know, okay, man, my opponent had a bad arrow there. Now is my shot chance to take this set. And then you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You don't have to focus where you need to have it, and then you end up with a bad shot. That's a very, very good point. So That's why this is so important to get that experience and learn it by doing. Because you, <laughs> I can see Ter talking about it all day. If you haven't been out there, you don't know what it's like. Yes, <laughs> that is very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> the, Swedes, the Swedes have like... Oh, they have, yeah, they have a flags. lot of flags now. Someone went and got all their flags. <laughs> So if Jens took that first set with two points, but it's not over until it's over. The judges are still discussing a bit uh, the target, uh, but it all seemed. Uh, it's news for them as well, as well as everyone else, shooting it in a competition like this. And the range is cleared, so we're heading off into our next end. And we're shooting. Yeah, so as Jens is leading, Robin is going to take this, uh, or shoot the first arrow, putting on, hopefully, some pressure on, yeah. on Jens. It's, a, it's yeah. a, the finals arena. The yeah. Both uh, start up with uh, with an eight. He did not look too happy about that one. So, Robin might, if he shoots a 10 now, he's definitely going to take this set. And, and he, he does. does! And he does. So, now, Jens, there's nothing he can do. He can just shoot his shot and uh, he can't do much about it. And he does. And, and he, he shoots he a 10. He that's, shoots a 10. That's the feeling you want because not, that was just a practice arrow. Yeah. It had no impact inflections on the set scores whatsoever, so nope. just get a good shot out there. I think yeah, someone is having fun with the asterisks yeah, today it as looks, all it of looks the arrows. Very clear to me. Maybe that's 6-5. Yeah, but it's already marked up, so if it, even if it's marked down, it's, it's a 23. It's still a set to Robin. Yeah, now. Robin is going to take the set. And the flag wars are still going. Look at that. Swedish and the Danes have a mascot as well. Do they now? They do have a mascot as well. So the Swedes have a panda. <laughs> but what do <laughs> the Danes the have? have? What do the Danes have as their mascot? Flag wars is very, very interesting. They're having some teddy bears. They're having some teddy bears over there. It's difficult to say what kind of teddy bears there are, but... Is it Santa Claus? Kind of looks like Santa Claus. Santa potential. Claus? <laughs> Look, it has a white beard. Is it Santa Claus? Yeah, okay, so the <laughs> Danes brought Santa Claus as their mascot. <laughs> and to he this has a little Danish flag as well. Yeah, that is cute. It is so cute. I love this. <laughs> I love it. 
It's just people coming together doing the sport that they love and having fun with it. And it's so, so important. Yes. Like the Nordic Youth Championship sounds like a big deal, but it's very, very much about making friends and having fun and just getting to know people and getting to getting meeting new friends. As yeah. Say, no yeah. Way. Yeah. Meeting new friends. Meeting new friends. Like the archery is almost like okay, sure, we're doing archery, which is fun, but it's all about the experience for them. Yeah. They're really putting on a great, great, great atmosphere here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For our archers on the field. So Jens is going to take away the f this end, the third end. Starts off with an eight. Yeah, and Danish are happy about that. Nine. Nine, which gives him good, good energy from the crowd right now. Yes. He continues, uh, continues in the eight. Yeah. Oh, he, he did not look happy, but that was okay. He puts it into the 10. Sometimes you get those arrows that you know you don't deserve, but you still deserve them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he pulls it out to the 6. But it's not putting a damper on the crowd at no. all. Yeah, it's it's Sense, definitely yeah. winning, but it's also I really did like his uh, his grouping there. It's a, it's very consistent. Yes, the the, the final arrow dropped a bit, yeah. but it's a very very consistent end, which is very very important. Yeah. It gives him a good feeling because this is you can see here the the grouping of Jens is a bit more spread out. Yeah, there is a grouping here as well, but I think Robin has a greater feeling from this end. But that's what I would expect from someone who has qualified with a lower score. The grouping is usually not that great, but somehow they always manage to like, get it right when they need to get it right and that's yes. a very very good skill to have put on the a game when you need it yeah or else you could just chill <laughs> it looks <laughs> like the danish are very very good at that <laughs> and we actually have a drone on the field so we're going to get some cool drone shots for uh when we put up a little mock-up of this event yeah, you can see the drone, drone is uh, flying over over the range right now. <laughs> it has to struggle a bit in the wind as well, but that's just fun. Yeah. Get a bit of shaky shots. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the wind has died down a bit though, but it can Oh, I think it's supposed to pick up a bit uh, later today. Uh, so there's gusts of wind and not consistent wind, and that makes it really, really hard to shoot because. Yeah, that is the worst the wind to shoot yeah, in. Yeah, it's the worst wind to shoot in, and you can get on the line and especially now you have 20 seconds you don't have time to wait for the win you just need to shoot your shot which you normally would do during uh, fi the finals when you have 120 seconds you can wait a bit mm. for the worst of the wind to weigh down you don't have time for that today so Jens is gonna and he's being cheered on greatly by his team he's gonna start team. off but it's actually, I've been thinking a bit about this, because some archers would be encouraged by this, but it could also affect the other way around. Yeah. Like, it could put more pressure on them, like not give them confidence, but actually put a bit of pressure. Some Even archers don't like that, they just want to be under the zone and not be disturbed and not think about people watching. Exactly. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's a part of the experience to learn, not maybe not to like it, but to learn how to tune it out. That is, I think that is yeah. really the clue. Really, how to learn to whether you like it or not is actually not that important. It's how you deal with it. Yeah, that is that is really the takeaway here. And he's getting really good experience here because of the crowd and the atmosphere, and just yeah. shooting in the conditions that are changing quite a bit. Yeah. So shoots a five eight, and now and you need to adapt to everything, and you need to like sometimes there's mistakes, sometimes things take longer than expected. So you need to be able to adapt to everything yeah. and still manage to find your zone. That's a good nine. That is a good nine. So Robin needs a nine to win. Let's see how he handles the pressure. A bit of a shake there just before anchoring. And the wind is picking up as well. And Puts he shot an eight. eight. So that so let's possibly ha makes it. Let's look at the arrows from Jens. Didn't he need a nine to win? Yeah, okay, because the arrows. There is an yeah. asterisk here. That's definitely yeah, that's out. Definitely so it's a five, yeah. eight, nine. 
So yeah, Robin should take this. Yeah. There is a great atmosphere from yeah, the crowd there. Yeah, it's yeah. just exciting to see, and it's 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 also it's it's very invigorating as archery has a tendency to be a bit of a quiet and calm sport, yeah. and just to see that there's no, such no, not internationally no, and that, no. Th but that's my point. Yeah, that's my point, and just to see they have the energy here and giving the, them this experience, it's really really nice to see. Yeah, getting people used to it, that's if you want to go internationally, that this is what it's you're going to mute. Yeah, and you have and, and as we spoke about just earlier, whether you like it or not it's how you deal with yeah. it yeah you need to still be in your zone and not let it affect you we've uh, we've had fun on uh, <laughs> looks like robin took that one yes as confirmed <laughs> sweden is chanting and the swedes are very 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 happy about this of course yeah but yeah as i was saying when we, we were shooting in practice we we practice talking to each other to get, try to get each other out of the zone and uh, change the game a bit. Still be able to shoot while you're having distractions everywhere. I think there's something wrong with the, with the scoreboards yeah. here. Yeah. Because he did win that. I think we're lacking a point. Well, the judges said the, the match is concluded. Yeah. We have a winner, so we're we moving on. Uh, Samuel Peterson as uh, second seed uh, with 631. So we can have a bit of a quick look at the brackets and how they evolved. You can see that uh, Jacob won his first match, 139. Samuel 137. So again, we're in the same. It's it's kind of the same position here as the, with the previous match. They were shooting around con consistently around 135 to 140 yeah. area, and uh, and we did have a lot of wind uh, up here on this field as well like yesterday. Yeah, I heard uh, rumors about it because I was down in my comfy little E and C hotel. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but I did hear that there was a lot of. Um, wind up here on this field and I think the guys uh, and the girls under over 21 shot up here so they're a bit more used to wind or one would assume uh, but it's blowing much heavier now than when the U16 shot I'm sorry you're doing my job <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking too much <laughs> we'll help we'll, we're, we're hel helping each other here yeah so we're back on track, every camera is online again, and we're getting ready for our next match. Christian again being uh, the judge, line. Jacob is gonna take it away and shoot the first end. I oh, will start off with the first arrow in this one. Yeah. So this is the first time as us, for us as well, sitting here, having all these buttons to push, and <laughs> speaking at the same time. Very, very, very hard job. To, just to think I about say it. Ar ironically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're 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 having the toughest oh, job. Oh yeah, today. yeah, yeah. We're we're so tired and we're just <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so Jacob starts off with an eight asterisk. <laughs> Sammy has oh, a bit a of long a long hold. hold. That's a long hold. He should watch the time. Three and he gets it off by the three second and, and puts it pays off. Pays pays off. Five puts five it in the nine. Puts it in the die. Check out. He did not look too happy though. No. It looks like he has a long shooting rhythm. Yeah. That can be quite risky in a finals like this, yeah. especially if the wind were to kick in again. Yeah. So. So that's a triple nine, I think. Yep. Yeah, he holds it for a very long time. Yeah. Gets an eight. 
første gang, så jeg ved ikke, om jeg er i Det er sgu godt. Ja, hun vil rejse Scoring and looks like a dead even start in this match. 26 to 26. The judges are up and the agents are up and, uh, at the target and uh, scoring it. Yeah. So uh, I just needed to check with Oliver or something front here because uh, Samuel actually arrived here without a bow. The bow he's shooting is not his. It isn't. No, it isn't. It's a. Uh, it's a. Um, Gummy came to me and was like, I need a bow. This was 15 minutes or 20 minutes before qualification. I remember, I was yeah. sitting in the tent when he yeah. came in. Uh, so he's borrowing a bow from Sander. Oh, uh, he is? Yeah, he is. We managed to get it to arrive on time before he started shooting his qualification Holy round. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, so he's shooting with a borrowed bow. And he's now in the finals. Yeah, he's now in the finals. <laughs> that is fun. That is very fun. <laughs> Okay, so one of the arrows of Jacob was marked up, so it's 27-26. Yeah. And we're heading off into the next end. But it just goes to show you how great of a sportsmanship there is in archery, and you always want to help someone be able to shoot. You always want to try and help. Help each other out. I think Martin Dems won uh, a fair play award for uh, something like that. Oh, it, he did? Yeah, handing out the bow to a competitor that lost his bow or got his bow destroyed, oh, who wow. we were shooting a match against. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just shows like your yeah, friends. Cause, cause you're we're competitors, we're, but you're friends. Yeah, you, yeah, of course you're here to compete, but you don't want the other person to have a sucky experience. No, you don't want to win just because the other person doesn't have a bow. Yeah. You want to win because you shot better. Yeah. That's good, man. If that win is a good Oh, that looks chill. The Danish are so chill. I am, I am impressed. strong shot. Putting an asterisk on it, so it's probably going to be checked up. But I agree. I think it might be an oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it just works. Sometimes it works. And that's a wild seven. So up is up a bit. Oh, wow! That was very unexpected. Yeah, it looked good. But so, uh, maybe it's a win. That puts him quite a bit back. Even the coach seemed a bit baffled about that shot. Yeah. He's like <laughs> and normally, like, right now, if this was my archer, or if it was me on the line, I would say, okay, remove that arrow. That arrow will not be shot again, because it could possibly be a damaged arrow. As long as the wind, then you're pretty sure about your technique. But having agents makes that a bit difficult, because if you don't have an experienced agent who knows to flip that arrow upside down in that quiver for the springer, you don't know which arrow that was. No. <laughs> Waving to the camera. <laughs> it's great to see the crowd and the atmosphere. Yeah. They're very, really, really engaging. It's nice to see. Yeah. It kind of seems like that we're getting a. Um, there are a bit of people watching here that. Getting a bit of a crowd. Yeah. It's <laughs> really, really cool. We're having fun with it. Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. It should be like this. It should be fun. It gives the best experience to all of them. Yeah. Okay, so Jacob is uh, trailing, so he'll be starting off the next yes, end. We're now going into end. Though. Very ah. even though. Yeah. It's a good match. Good and even match. Even though it's not a sport that we're used to seeing from guys like this, it's still a good even match.
And the wind is really playing its part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wind is really kick, really, really bothering them. Again, he's he's drawing it out. Yeah. Sino with his uh, long hold, but a Yeah, it's a good cheer from Ireland. Yes. He's getting centralized a bit more. Yeah. Doyle, bit, you can see here it's a bit low, so let's see what how he adjusts for the final arrow of this set. Or this end. Yeah, such a long hold. It's got to be hard in the wind like that. Uh, it's risky. It doesn't look like it's affecting me much, though. No, but, but again, this is his rhythm. Yeah. We're just... We're just very aware of what could if something yeah. were to happen he has no leeway he has yeah. no leeway at all and maybe maybe he just likes that okay yeah that yeah, could, that could yeah. be that could be that could really be because it looks like he's not feeling the effects of having a little time he's just yeah. doing his thing shooting a shot and it's working very very well for oh, him. Whoa, 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 whoa. now he's uh, this is a uh, six point lead yeah all of a sudden the door is wide open and again, Samuel. He's shooting with a with a, with a bow. With a he does not know with draw length that is not his. I don't think he had any of his equipment at all. He's borrowing everything wow. from a guy who has a spare compound bow to shoot for fun. Yeah, because he was initially a recurve archer. Yeah, he's a recurve archer. <laughs> he just shot, a, sh bought a little here, bought a little there, bought a little there. So, like, he's not even a compound. Comp competitor set up. No, it's no. just like, ah, I'm having a little fun on my free time, so I'm, I'm putting this bow together and then it just works for him, apparently. And it's good. See the drone actually passing by in the center of the shot right now. Yeah. We're getting some cool drone shots. Look Sadly, we don't have them window. for the stream, but again, they will be probably be used for the video for the mock-up of the entire event. So we're getting on with our fourth end. <laughs> It looks cold and it looks windy out there. Yeah. And the drone is really struggling, so the wind is yeah, very, yeah, it's very actually a good hard. Oh, it's, it's really being caught up yeah. by the wind from time to time. This time, take Jacob has a bit of a longer hold, puts it in the seven. So, with the wind, it's not just affecting you on the target board, it's affecting the flight of the arrow as it goes along. So, even if the archer looks like he's not being affected as much, it can really, really affect it by the time it hits the target. See now, Samuel puts it low in the six. Still has a lead, a four point lead. I do hope the guys are having fun out there because I know the feeling of shooting in winds like this, where it just seems like it's very, very. Um, it was uh, random. Who yeah, and it must be frustrating at some yeah, point. Yeah, it's as well. very frustrating because you cannot do much about it, especially that with alternating shooting. And it doesn't feel like you've been able to do your best. And that's an annoying feeling when you're leaving those fields. But it's a good grouping from the Jacob there. That's a good grouping. And the uh, wind is really, really picking up. He seemed actually uh, he's talking, we can see him talking with the coach in the background yeah. a bit. They're probably discussing how to adjust for uh, the... I don't think this was adjusting for this. That was a bit of a spread. Yeah. I don't think there's much you can do in wins like this. Ah, it's true. Please, 
So what was uh, quite of a bit of a lead has now dwindled to only a two-point lead. Yeah. So they have. Uh, no, Score is very happy about the asterisk today. Yeah. Taking no chances. Always no. setting up the judge. Yeah. Big spread from both ushers, and there's just no good feeling of knowing that you basically had no. Well, it's good experience, yeah. but it's not as much fun to shoot. No, it must be quite frustrating. Yeah. So we're starting off. We're getting on with the next end. Is it the last end? That is correct. We're at the fifth and final end. We haven't had any misses, so we're probably looking around. Uh, Which is quite of interesting because the girls had a lot of misses and the girls shot better than the guys during the qualification. Yeah. Which will imply to me that the girls have a lower poundage and gets more affected by the wind. Definitely, yeah. Samuel with his notoriously long hold. Oh, and now he's being affected a bit. Oh, the wind is picking up. We can hear it. We can hear it grabbing the flags and the banners, and the clock is ticking. But he oh, it. he got it out yeah. of the last last second. <laughs> he took no chances there. And he, oh, you can see the boat moving quite a bit. Yeah. Struggling, but puts it comfortably and strongly Very, to very the good. He's doing his best right now, and he's fighting for it. Oh, even Samuel. Oh, yo, yo. He is fighting for this. Fighting for this. Oh, this is not easy. Not no. easy to stand there in this wind. It's not as much fun either. And he puts oh, it in the tent. Yeah, okay, but that's fun. That is impressive. That is really, really He's saying, impressive. No, you're not getting anything free from me today. No, I'm not. I'm not giving this away. No, no, no. So Jacob, put it. Has to, has to put it in the tent. He has to. He shoots a nine. He shoots a nine, so it's very, it's it's a strong end, even though, especially in these conditions. Yeah. But now, Rock again, up. only a seven to yeah. win. But in these conditions, in these conditions, the sevens is hard enough. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, oh he, is he is moving. He is moving. And the side pin is. And, and he puts it in the eight. eight. But that is enough. So that is uh, your Nordic Youth Championship for. Compound under 21 men with a borrowed bow right there. Yeah, with a borrowed bow. With a borrowed bow. Which goes to show it's not really the equipment always, it's really the archer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just the ability to have faith and trust in an equipment that is not yours, that is not what you're accustomed to, that is not the same grip, it's not the same release, it's not the same draw length, really, really could affect a lot of archers mentally. To be able to continue their technique when things are not the same as what they've always practiced. Yeah. So the judge called Samuel Peterson the winner. And the archers are congratulating each other. And the crowd goes wild out here on the Monywood field in Larvik, Norway. And now we are going to move back another. 10 meters to the recurve under 21 women's gold medal final. Here we have uh, Marin Hidmansotir from Island with 621 qualifying and Freya Andersen from Sweden with 567. So there's a bit of a gap there during the qualification, but again, with these wins, these conditions, and the field and the setup and everything as it is. It's going to be a very interesting match, I'm sure. Let's have a quick look at the brackets and how we got here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, prepping a bit, and uh, the cameras are being moved around, and again, as we're increasing the distance of the field, some targets have to be moved, yeah. cameras have to be moved, so we're having a bit of a delay. It's not a delay though, the, the crew have been working very, very hard during this uh, final. I'm very impressed by how quickly it's been yeah. going and moving 
distances and, and keep, everything. Keep, keep in mind, again, this is the first time this has been done yeah. in this way, and it's really going fairly smoothly. Yeah, I I'm very, very impressed by everyone. The archers seem to know what they're doing, the judges seem to know what they're doing, the crew is working full time, it's going twitch, 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 very, very fast and efficiently. So, we have here, uh, you can see actually that Marion had uh, only one match as she uh, shot against uh, Walter Olsen and our first... Uh, yeah. Walter Olsen, is that a Norwegian thing or is that an international I, I'm thing? I'm actually quite uncertain, but now we're making it an we're international thing. We're making it, we're making it a Nordic thing. A least. Nordic thing. Yeah. So again, Walter Olsen, that is a walkover, so uh, if you if you didn't catch that. So, yeah. Marion did not uh, had a walkover in her first round. Then she met Nadine and won 6-0. Freya had a 6-0 in her quarterfinals and 6-2 against Linda Mortensen in her semifinals and is now in the finals. This is it. I think this is the looks. Yeah, it this looks This matchup looks... Uh, I think this is going to be a good match. Yeah. I don't know. I've j I just got a really good feeling about this. So yeah, the archers here are presented. We have Sweden against Iceland. We have the, the flag wars going on continuously. Oh yes, the cameras are still being adjusted, so we're almost getting there. The line judge is waiting for the field to clear up yeah. until we're going to start. And uh, the crew has cleared the field and we should get a ready matchup soon, yeah. very soon. Judge is checking on his comms. Confirmation he needs. Okay, there we have it. We are ready for our match. Archer number one, are you ready? Archer number two, ready? So we have Maureen starting the match on target one to the right from our part of perspective. And now we're going back to set scoring as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. We're, we're, we're done with compound for today. For uh, Yeah, we're done with compound. We're, we're with almost done with the entire day. Yeah. What happened? We should we could do this for several hours, I feel. Oh, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. Oh, oh, yeah. oh the wind oh, oh, is oh. catching her as well. It's tough. Yeah. That is tough. The wind is really, really uh, catching them. It's shooting good as well. Yeah. So now we're up, to, we've increased 10 meters, so we're now up to 60 meters. So the arrows are going longer, and uh, that's a nine, that's good. Yeah. And uh, again, it's more common to shoot with a lower poundage on recurve than it is compound. Yeah. So the, the arrows will fly slower in the wind, and uh, it will naturally be more effective, but it doesn't seem to be f affecting these girls too much. Emery, Laura Freya has a really like quick shot process. Yeah. Which is one of the approaches you can have when you're shooting and when just do yeah. strong and quick shots, strong don't think too much, shot. just trust your process and just execute. Don't give the wind time enough to push your bow away. That is actually, yeah, that's a <laughs> really nice way of putting it. Yeah. Flag wars are uh, Adding on quite strong, and we see the pandas back, the flags are back. When I went from uh, compound to uh, recurve, uh, my coach used to say, don't give yourself enough time to make mistakes. That is a... Oh yeah, that is, yeah. That is actually very deep. It's very, very smart. Oh, that is... Just shoot your shot. Don't give yourself time to doubt it. Yeah. That is very, very smart. Yeah. He's a smart man. Morten Bo, who is now currently in... Ireland with the youth national team for the European Youth Championship, I believe. World Youth Championship, yeah. Marion took the first end, and we're heading off to the next end. The agents have, took, have taken the arrows from the target. The range is cleared.
let's see what she does here. Bit longer good hold, and that shot. was yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that really paid off. Because I was thinking that maybe her end, her shots were a bit too quick previously. Now she took her like half yeah. a second more to just and it's not propose. much. It's not much at all. You can hardly tell the difference. Oh, this oh, yeah. is <laughs> strong. <laughs> this you're is shooting good. I'm shooting better. Ball. That dropped a bit. Yeah. Uh, that as well. So pretty equal. They're quite even. They're, yeah, they're, they're quite very, even. very even. It's very yeah. interesting match. I think that missed. That I think I saw it flew hear, by the side. The at least. Oh, that's a strong win. Fight for this, and she does, and she hits the. Four, Is that a four? Yeah, yeah, it looks like a four. So it looked like uh, Freya shot just um, beside, the, just to the side of the target. I think I saw some fletchings just oh, you saw past it. the side <laughs> as I was fumbling with the camera angles there. <laughs> So we have a miss here for Freya, so which means that Marion is gonna comfortably gonna go up to a four and zero lead. There's nothing comfortable about shooting in these conditions. No, no, it switches so fast. Yes. But again, you don't have time to mess around, take down, do it again, restart. You just you need some time. You need to get the shot, that arrow away. The arrow was found, which is great. Yeah. So we went just to the right side of the target, probably yes. knocked by it down by the window with the bow and everything. So we're heading off into our third end. The arrows are being pulled off the target right now. The scores are confirmed. Marion has a 4 and a lead. Now they're starting to have a chanting competition as well. <laughs> they're trying to win the supporter of the day. <laughs> Some people like it, some people don't. Internationally, if you're the highest ranked archer, you can choose if you want to start or not. Uh, so it's more up to you than it is. Right now, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible for everyone involved. And she shoots a slow seven. She is a bit low, but the wind can be pushing her arrows down. It just it just uh, for, for the strong shot she had earlier, it was all about the strong execution in the shot, yeah. keeping keeping the pressure, not dropping the arm, really pushing and going for the really target important. all the way. That's good. That's Even good. in conditions like this, it's very important because you need to f finish your shot where you want it to go, even if your aim isn't there. Even though it was a bit to the right, I would say that was quite a strong confident yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. Look at that wind going. Even getting to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things are starting to fly around in here. <laughs> so a five. a five to win. That oh, is that is a enough. four. That is a four. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Because there's a possible. Oh, we have plastic flying onto the field now as well. <laughs> I think that might actually go to Freya. <laughs> oh, sorry. So let's see how they mark this up. I think there will be a four two. Yeah. Kind of looks like it. Yeah, Which is exciting. Yeah, because the, the asterisk is actually closer to a 5 than to a 4. Yeah. So, regardless. Yeah. So, we have a 21 21. We have a 5 1. Yeah. 21 21. So yes, when they're. Scores are even, they will split the points at points. Yes, so we're heading into.
into our fourth end. So Maureen had the opportunity now to actually back this, and yeah. the wind and probably the pressure got to her. Yeah. Because she needed only a five. Again, this is the situation you only need yeah, this or that arrow amount to get the win, but then you start thinking about and that. And she's told what Freya is shooting yes. by the commentator on the field, so she knows. And she might not be accustomed to knowing that. Yeah. Because some archers really like it to be quiet, quiet and calm and that said a word and then you end up in situations like this where you have no choice there is a loudspeaker in your ear yes. you're hearing it either if you want <laughs> and a camera in your face and a camera in your face <laughs> starts off with a five that's actually quite far away from the grouping as well so mm. she's probably not very happy with that shot that seemed like a strong shot yes yeah. i was about to say Good, strong execution, good before push to the target. Oh, Marion, this is gonna be Freya's gonna have a tough time here. Yeah, and you know that it, she knows that in her head. Oh, the wind is grabbing her. Oh, oh. the wind is really grabbing her, so it's not over till it's over, it's but she's still, over still, over. Still, still keeping the, the lead, target. still keeping the lead. 14 to 18, yeah. sets an eight. eight. Yeah. Okay, so but this is um, 16, she needs a two to win. But in these conditions, it's not that easy. Sorry, that wrong target. <laughs> so that was a five. No, seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, seven. Right. So, Iceland taking this. So, Recurve Under 21's gold medalist is Marine Anita Hilmesotter. <laughs> Most likely, of course, the judges yeah. have to confirm, but yeah, we'll, but, but we'll feel so ballsy yeah, to say that this is, <laughs> this is confirmed. <laughs> Standing with her bow, though she she wants to make she, she wants, wants to, to make sure she doesn't yeah. want she does not want it's to take this granted. To have. And now she's celebrating a bit with her teammates. And the line judge is giving it and it's confirmed. Right and you can hear it. And she looks very very happy right now. And she's congratulating her. Usually on the line there, they're both congratulating each other with a well-executed competition because even though you didn't win, you can still shoot very, very well. Yes. You can have the best day of your life on yeah. the range, but if your competitor is stronger than you, you have yeah. a chance. Yeah. It's just that it's just that simple. It's a good feeling to know that okay, I did my best, my best is just not good enough yet. It's a very important word, yet. Yet. Okay, so we're now moving into uh, under 21's men. This is a special Nordic class. We're shooting in 60 meters, uh, as well as the women we just saw. Usually, Rika Run 21 in the World Archery will shoot 70 meters, and we have athletes at that distance after this match as well. We actually only have two archers in this. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, we're going straight to the finals. No brackets to look at. Danish Matt Gorey and Swedish. I have to say, I can really start to feel the wind actually putting a bit on the temperature. It's actually yeah, it's, it's, it's getting it's, very uh, cold, and we're in the shade in the garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we don't get any sun and the heat from that. So kind of looking forward to getting into the sun. Uh, but it's probably be colder there because we're pretty sheltered from the wind right here. Yeah. So it might be worse to be out there. But there's a lot of archers in t-shirts, so it doesn't look too bad. Their mothers just didn't teach them how to clothe themselves properly. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone is as cold-blooded as me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're heading off into this match. Matt is uh, probably going to take. He's going to take off the first uh, arrow. Shooting commences. Shoots 
think. Did not look too happy about that, but it got it in the line. They're shooting quite quickly and very confidently, ex strong execution movements. Yeah. Oh, that was that a miss. Was Just hit low on the target. I can see it. I, uh, it's, a, it's a miss, yes. Yeah, even him as well. Yeah. He's lucky, he's lucky there. See the wind is really pulling the arrows in that direction right now. They're really trying to do quick shots here. Yeah. That is for sure. They don't want to wait. Don't wait for the mistake. Don't Isn't wait that for the mistake, yeah. yeah. Trying to do quick and strong shots. And there you go. Yeah. There you go. No, we can <laughs> <That's> <laughs> very relieved that that was over. Yeah. <laughs> like, he got those three arrows there, and yeah. You can really see it on in his face. That is, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard out there. The challenging conditions. Yeah, challenging definitely conditions, challenging conditions. A whole new setup, alternating shooting, and like Emil looks like he has a very, very quick. The last two arrows was a very quick rhythm, and that puts the pressure on Matt to be ready mm. and prepared. He needs to have his arrows knocked, he needs to have his grip correctly, he needs to be ready to draw at any moment. And not many archers like that. No, that is for sure. So we keep on continuing to have the flag war. <laughs> I think the only <laughs> young athletes right now are having fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the older generations have given up. Yeah, they're tired. You know, the, yeah. the, the youth, they have the energy. Yeah, <laughs> the youth have the energy, that's right. And you can really, really feel the energy here today from the crowd. And that's, I love to see that. It's amazing. Really, really amazing. Yeah. I was going to say that sounded Norwegian, but it's Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very similar. I was like, where is the Norwegian? It's very similar. It's All very these languages similar. are very similar, though. I'm struggling a lot with uh, w with uh, the Danish and uh, Finnish and Icelandic, of course. Yeah, yeah, the Finnish yeah. completely different la language trees as well. Or not the Icelandic one, but okay, we're heading off into our second round, second hand, I mean. Matt is uh, taking it away. That's a good strong shot right there. Yes. Strong execution, strong yeah, yeah, timing. Yeah. Shooting really, really well. Yeah. 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 Almost, yeah. that looks like an 8 to me. It's probably an asterisk. They mark it as a 9. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Again, continuing with the strong, quick shots. Don't hesitate, trust the process, and go for it. That's pretty much what uh, it seems like they're focusing yeah. on right now. And in these conditions, that's really what you have to do. You really have to just trust it and just do the shot. And it's a miss. It looks like it did a yet, yet again have a miss, which is, uh, which is a shame. The wind is really, really hot out there. Yeah. So that's a strong end from Emil. It's a strong end from so Emil will take this set as well, making it a 4-0 lead. But in these conditions, anything can happen. And with these archers, anything can happen as well. Matt was the top-ranked archer in this competition. But Emil is really showing that he's not one to mess with today. He brought his game. He brought his game, yeah. <laughs> It was a long, long day at the field yesterday as well, so the archer was probably tired. Yeah, because the competition setup is quite, it's, 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 it's quite, quite cramped. Intense. It's quite intense. It's quite yeah. cramped. Like comparable to uh, to an international event, you have they're usually over a week. We're uh, starting yeah. Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Yeah, we have some unofficial practices, and then we have official practices and qualifications, and then maybe one or two rounds of individual finals. We're we'll here. Uh, We're getting messages saying We're getting some no messages. Yes, this is an international event. But yes, I, I, I agree. It is an international event, yeah. 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 And there was a shark. What is it? Denmark is a shark teddy bear. A shark. It's a shark <laughs> teddy bear. Got a little shark. Was it a Santa Claus? Baby or did we shark. change it? 
I have a kid at home. I don't need to have that song on my brain more than I already do. Okay, so they're still marking up the targets, flipping over the boards now, and it's 4 0 confirmed to Emil. What we meant by saying international events, we went uh, World Championships and World Cups and stuff like that. Uh, and the European Grand Prix as well have one week uh, where we have longer days uh, but less shooting. There's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of waiting. There's uh, also not that many classes as well. Uh, yeah, because that, 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 that's to point out that the, tr the traditional classes don't appear in those events. No. But they are appearing here. It's just senior and uh, men's and women's division cup on the radar there. Yes, we're heading into our third end. The range is clear. The archers are set up and we're about to commence. being moved by the wind yeah definitely he's shaking almost but he puts ah, it onto the target that's really strong that. oh and the hat flies away doesn't look like it's facing him much so nope shoots an eight as well eight. shoots yeah. an eight as well good grouping right there that's strong in these conditions in these conditions the wind is just Throwing them around like yeah. crazy. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and you only have 20 seconds to shoot your arrow. You need to get it away. Yeah. Oh! Oh, oh but he hit. He oh, hits the, the target. Oh. It's, in these conditions, this is uh, impressive. Getting it on the face. Look at that. So a 10 to win. And it's an eight. It's an eight. So we have a four two. So Matt decreases uh, Emil's lead. So Matt is taking two set points this round. So we will not have a six zero or three and match in this match either. So every match today have been very exciting and ongoing and not just an easy fast. Things are flying here. And the wind is really, <laughs> yeah, really, really ruining really stuff strong. now. Things are falling over left and right. The targets are secured with concrete weights behind them. So there's should they should not no, fall over. They should not fall they over. Should not fall over. Should, should, uh, should, should is the key word here. <laughs> but it's cold and it's exciting, exciting day here today. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. He's in the finals. Of course He's he doesn't want to. Yeah. He's not rolling over. <laughs> so we're heading off into our next and fourth end. And Matt is uh, taking it away. Looks like Matt has some more protection from the wind than the Emil does. Or he's just uh, a little more lucky with the wind. That's an 8. You can see Emil is really, really like moving around by the wind. Yeah. Seven. Pulls it out to the 7. He's keeping the door open for Matt. And he's taking it. He's fighting as hard as he can right now. Oh, seven. A good Puts ten it in right a ten. Strong shot. 
So Matt really has to put a good shot here and hope that uh, with a three, I think this is gonna be hard. He needs a two to win. We've seen this today. We have seen this earlier today. We don't take anything for granted, but he shoots yeah, an eight, eight, so. Yeah, it's really like the strong shooting of Emil. Emil takes this. But that was not an easy match. They were both fighting very, very hard, and that's very lovely to see. They did not surrender, they did not cave. They shot their shots and they did their thing. I wished we could have uh, gotten the shots of that because now that the Icelandic mascot Gumi was dancing and we saw the crowd was happy about that. Oh! <laughs> was I not paying attention? There's a thing in my way. We have decided that the Icelandic uh, team mascot is going to be a big gummy bear. <laughs> so you need to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> we need a lot of wood. <laughs> I know. But you're not in the crowd competing in the flag wars that is going on with you right now. So that was confirmed and the archers are thanking each other for a good, well executed match and a good, good fight there. Seo has confirmed and we're now moving on to our second to last match of the day. Recurve under 21's, well archery distance, so yeah. regular distance. Uh, women's class. So they will be on 70 meters. And again, we have the same uh, thing that the women shot one point better than the men's. That's really, really cool. I like that. I like that. So we have Othelia Bullen from Sweden with 588 against Veslema Ilsvik from Norway with a 570. So that's 18 points diversity, but I don't think that will really matter in these conditions. I think we will have a very, very interesting match. Oh, this in is going to be open. Yeah, it's this very This is open. completely open. Yeah. 18 points is nothing here, I'm no, sorry. No, it's nothing. This <laughs> is really nothing. <laughs> it's going to be a very, very interesting match. Have a look at the brackets. She had to really put up a fight, and so did Otilia. Yeah. They've had uh, quite a fight getting up to the finals. So uh, we're prepping the field, removing some targets to increase the distance yet again. Yeah. 70 meters. And uh, the cameras uh, should are being set up as well. The archers are getting on the field. Getting a quick introduction and uh, let's see how we start this one out. And we have our camera crew running on the field right now, making sure that we get every single point of those arrows onto the, our cameras. Yeah. And I think it's, is it Sushi that is now? Uh, line judge. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. quite the renowned. We're really lucky to have her as yeah, a coach. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, that's really good coach. And you see in the coach's box there. I think that's Sander, and that is the guy who borrowed the Icelandic guy his bow. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> so uh, full circle moment right now. And the range is cleared. And we're ready to commence shooting. So Thelia is going to take off the first uh, first arrow here. Doing its work. Oh, that, that was, was low. I think it was a miss. That was a two. Yeah, uh, a two. it's a two. It's a low, low two. She draws it out to a two, two as well. As well. Still 
low as well. Yeah. I think the wind is pushing it pretty down. Yeah, they uh, both need to <laughs> do their adjustments for the next step. Oh. Or it could also be the nerves. That was wood. So now we've increased the distance quite a, another 10 meters, so the arrows are flying 10 meters further and the wind is has 10 more meters to affect the arrow as they're going on. And uh, yeah, that you on 70 meters in this wind you really, really uh, need to have a high poundage on your bow to make it affect a little less. Yeah, okay. So just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Realize that we have a we have a crowd behind us and they're literally snacking popcorn <laughs> while watching the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll prov provide good entertainment. Yeah, kind of well based yeah. based on this. <laughs> uh, they, yeah, we're doing some quite good stuff here. Not only the Danish people can chill, we can chill as Norwegian as well. <laughs> yeah. We know how to chill as well. Okay, so for this first end, Vesleme most likely has taken the first set of two points. Yeah, with having all her uh, arrows in the target, let's see how we... Yeah. Yeah, all targets, uh, all arrows are in the target. Yeah. And there was one, there was one miss? Yes, there was one There miss. was one miss. Yeah, she hit the wood on the right hand side right there. Uh, so the arrow probably flew away. You can see they're trying to get that arrow out right now. They got it. So would you shoot with this arrow now for the next uh, end? No. <laughs> if I had enough arrows, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, but maybe she needs to check it. Uh, and again, like you can see, the agent right there, she has that arrow upside down. So she's putting it away for the archer so yeah. she can just make sure. Not think about that right now. Yeah. And that is actually a, that is a very good thing and it's a good habit to do to, to make, make sure that the arrow that is. Uh, that has happened something with that it is placed upside down so that the athletes themselves can make yeah. sure what they want to shoot with. So we're underway. Delia is uh, continuing this. And she oh, shoots a strong, nine. strong yeah, nine. That's a good comeback. And Best May replies with a strong nine. That's a good thing about her. I'm matching you. I see you. Yeah, I see you. I follow I you. See you. You were on top of the scoreboard, but I'm not giving you this no, easily. No, no, no. I'm fighting for it. And she continues. She did not look happy with that, but it hit where it needed to. It's a bit of a spread for... Uh, yeah. The wind is probably getting end there. Better. Let's see how Veslemay ends finishes up this. She did not, but that, that's yeah, enough. That's seven. That is definitely enough for this. So it's a four and zero. Oh. It's a four and zero, oh, and she's gonna bag this yeah. set as well. She's shooting really, really well. She looks like she's having a lot of fun as well. That's yeah. the coach right there, just talking to her, making jokes, and just making sure she's having fun because it can get it can get really serious, and you can get really in your head when you're shooting on, standing on that shooting line, and just feeling the nerves and everything, and everything that's at stake as well. It's really important to have someone there that you're comfortable with and who can just help you relax and have a chill time. Have a chill time. Have a chill time. Just enjoy, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the and ride. Just well, putting jokes aside, it's not that often you get this opportunity. No. And just really, that's why I try to tell my archers when they're out, when they're so lucky to go to a in really huge international event. Yeah. I'm just when first time when you go to the line, take two or three seconds to just take a look around and just take it all yeah, in. Yeah, make enjoy sure you it. enjoy it because it's, it's over so quickly. It's over so quickly. You won't get that time again. And like, yeah, you can be mad about a one arrow, but what does that one arrow actually mean in the amount of thousands of arrows that you're going to shoot? 
during your time as an archer, it doesn't really, really matter. Oh, exactly. And we've so. been at some amazing venues and events and just enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. So Otelia is gonna, since she's trailing, she's gonna start off with the first shot. Drops it a bit low to the seven. Oh. It looks strong. She yeah. follows. Uh, follows seven. her. She didn't look happy, but it's good. It's getting closer to yeah. the center. That dropped so. I think oh, you hear the ooh from the crowd. Yeah. It's getting more exciting. And now even the wind picks up. Yeah. Oh. That was another. Was that another miss? Was that another miss? I think so. I can only see two two arrows in the target, so. And, oh, and a good nine right there. So Veslamoy takes this. Yeah, that. Uh, we have our first six-zero match today. I think it's actually our. Sec is it? Yeah, I think it is our second. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. But here, definitely the wind and the conditions played yeah, their yeah, parts because yeah, yeah. this was uh, yeah. It's hard, tricky, and just the event at all. <laughs> the wind is doing its thing today. Things have been flying around, not just arrows, <laughs> tents and hats and bows almost, and bodies. Luckily, they're still bodies. There. <laughs> <laughs> but it does not seem to affect the crowd at all. They have the energy, they have the presence, they're here rooting for their friends and athletes as well, and it's nothing I love seeing more than that. A good camaraderie, good sportsmanship, and everyone in love with archery. So again, the um, the one number one from out of from ca qualification was not necessarily the one that took away this. No. Uh, took and this gold medal. Veslamay as well was yeah she was ranked number second so it's not that much of an underdog and she is now confirmed winner from the judge at the target. So we have the confirmation here and they're greeting and thanking each other for the match. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. better, and the coaches are agreeing, are congratulating each other as well. I love to see that. It's quite very important. Competitors until the last arrow is shot, and then we're all just archers in love with the sport and having friends and just making good acquaintance. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. So we are now. Slowly moving into our f final match of the day. We're also not far behind schedule today. It's gone very, very smoothly. The event has been very well organized and everything has worked as it should and nothing is better than that and that's kind of a rare happening as well. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Having things gone smoothly is almost. <laughs> yeah, and in this wind with things flying around, it's very. very yeah, nice. I was actually expecting delays. Yeah. Honestly, uh, I was yeah, expecting yeah, delays with, with these wind? conditions. I was yeah. expecting delays. But we've, we've not had them, which is great. Yeah, which it's is great. great. Makes our job easier. And oh, we can. Uh, properly this time we're starting off we're now slowly getting into our final gold final match of the day recurve under 21s and for the matchup we have Holger Vesgard from Denmark and Joachim Flatterby from Norway I can have a quick look at their ranking rounds or their qualification Joachim ranked third with 575 and Holger with 587. Now this is a bit of a gap on 70 meters. Not much, but it's a bit of a gap. But I don't think I think we'll have a very very close match in this. Yeah, again well. we've, we've we've seen it like yeah. bad. We've seen quite a bit of a spread today, and it's also been like if you're because the wind is so erratic as it is. If you're lucky enough to be able to shoot in a moment of wind or yeah. silence, yeah. you can get off quite good shots. The crowd is going crazy for, for Holger. 
and for Joachim. Yeah, you. This is kind of the luck of a draw when it comes to like 20 seconds to shoot your arrows because you can get lucky and there can be a moment with no win as you're releasing. Mm. Um, you really have no guarantee for either of that or if it's going to be windy as yeah a lot so Holger is gonna start off this Our match final match of the day final match of the day hoping for a good one Again, with the chill. Yeah, calm collected shot. Yeah. It's a six to the right. That as well, that was a very fast shot from yeah. him and five, I also think. Also dragging to the right as yeah. a target. So it looks like the wind might have turned a little. Or maybe there was more wind on the practice field. Could be, or the wind was different at least. Yeah. Definitely catching on them t onto them now. Yeah. Strong That's execution though pulls yeah. it even further out to the two. Trying to remember to keep the bow arm and it looks uh, so they're pulling it pulling a bit to the right, yeah. both of them. I think either the wind has turned because but it doesn't look like that from the flag, so it's quite possible that the practice field had a bit of a different wind, so they put their sights on practice field because it's not far off, it's the same direction and everything. Uh, so I believe that that's what they've done. And then when they're coming on to the to the field right here, we have the building and everything and the wind is a bit different. So your sight might not be in the center when you're starting. That could very much, very much be. I would say that th there's quite a high possibility that Holger is going to take this first set. Yeah. And I think that, that there's going to be some arrows that suddenly get a highly marked up here. So Holger uh. takes the lead after the first end. And the crowd is doing their thing, trying to really cheer on their contestants on the field. Looks like Denmark has given up on the flag wars. But Which Norway means Norway is winning? Huh? Which means Norway is winning? Which means Norway is winning, uh, yeah. But also we have... Um, but Norway has not have a, had a mascot. No. Norway has no mascot. We need to find a mascot for Norway as well. They had the baby shark and they had a little Santa Claus, the Danes. Did they have Santa Claus or was it the shark or all along? Or was it the shark all along? The Danes. Did they always have the shark or was it a little Santa Claus as well? Was it always just a shark? We don't know. <laughs> it's quite possible that it was just a shark the other way around. But I'm curious about what the shark uh, symbols. And the range has been cleared. And we're getting on with our second end. And the judge is giving the signal for shooting to commence. They're doing the crowd is doing the wave. That is cool. Joachim is starting off. Clock is ticking. Oh. Again, that's a different thing for Joachim to be starting off and having the timer set and having to shoot a shot straight away. Because last end he did not have to do that. Mm. Oh, Holger looks calm and collect that was a strong shot. Yeah. That's a nice execution. Yeah, good shot. It's getting payment for that. They're consistently a bit to the right here. Well, Holger has uh, really adjusted for that. Yeah. He has really adjusted that, for that. Again, that comes with experience. Joachim might not be, uh, might not know that he needs to do that mm. or trust his shot enough to actually make that adjustment. It's very, very easy to think, oh, it's my fault. I'm the one doing that and not my bow. Mm. That comes with a lot, a lot of experience. 
That looked super easy. That looked that was a really nice and strong end. That was very, very comfortable. Yeah. And a good grouping for Joe Game. <laughs> Crowd is really enjoying themselves. They are rootin' tootin' for their contestors. <laughs> <Rootin' tootin'. laughs> They're rootin' tootin'. <laughs> We suddenly became very, very international right here, right now. <laughs> Danish are very, very, have been very energetic all weekend, actually. Yeah. Yeah, they're really, really supporting the rushers and doing the wave as well. And the scores are confirmed. I feel like I'm on a football match right now. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. Just good old love for the sport. Creating a great energy, and it's it, the experience becomes a lot more fun. Yeah. For the for the ones that are watching, and for the ones on the field, I would say. Yeah, on the line. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody's having fun. You know it's not just you. Your whole team is having fun with you. And that's such a great experience to have for everyone involved. So it's 4-0. Joachim still trailing, which means he's going to start off this end as well. Looks but like he's struggling a bit with the starting, actually. Yeah. That's actually a good point. It's a nice, nice and strong execution. Yeah. And he has a lot of time. Let's go six for Holger. Again, I really do like his execution. Yeah. It's really, really strong. Holger is very stable. I've yeah. Just, he looks like a rock where he stands. It's very, very impressive. <laughs> it does. And again, with like the calm and collectedness that the Danes have. The Danes have, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's maybe very you're, you're onto something. Yeah. They've all had it. And the final arrow for Joachim. That was marked as a four. So Holger has a five. It's a win. five to win. And, and he it gets it. it. Bags it into the night, gets and the crowd the goes wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the coach is giving him a tap on the shoulder, like, good job. You really did that thing. And the wind. Look, just look at those look banners. At yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're happy. Yeah, I think they're I, happy. I, th I think yeah. they're happy with the result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they're having fun on the field. So, Baird is confirming the values. And uh, let's uh, wait for the confirmation of the judge. And the winner is uh, confirmed. Yeah, Holger is confirmed the winner for our final match of the day. And there we go. And he's cheering on the crowd. Yeah. He has, he's animating the crowd. That's great. That's what we want to see. <laughs> Thank you for the match. It looks like Holger had a lot of fun out there. Yeah. And he's enjoying. Yeah, he's really, really enjoying himself right now. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be.
So that was our final match of the day. Yeah. And, uh, me and Lila Ojib was... I, well, this was a great blast of fun. This was very, very fun. It was a lot better than running around on the field doing hard labor, at least. Yeah, <laughs> just sitting here, having a chat about archery, doing having, what we love. Yeah. Chatting about what we love. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Not can we really get better than, that, better than that. So the athletes are now uh, going down for lunch. The field is being prepped for the medal ceremony later today. And we hope everyone has had a great experience here yeah. at Larvik. The uh, event has been very well put together. Yeah. The finals day have been on a really high level. Very, very. Nothing to complain about at all. So uh, with those words, we want to say thank you for watching. Thank yeah. you for following the stream. And thank uh, you for uh, yeah, enjoying this with us. We hope you have. Until yeah. next year. Yeah, until next year.